skyline there in the background, the Coliseum, 90,000 on hand. There's the young phenom for the Trojans, number 18, that J.R. Soward back there. And we can see that Chris Miller, number two, is in front of him. So they're going to try to hide Soward, who is averaging 32 yards a kickoff return. Obviously, Jim Sanson will try to keep it away. They move on the kickoff. Soward at the goal line, coming out from the five to the 10. Cuts 20, 25, breaks free, and here he comes again. 35, 40, 45, still going before he's out of bounds at midfield. The young sensation. <laughs> now, Notre Dame did everything they could with their kickoff coverage. They used a bunch, line them originally, and then spread out so USC could not define their blocking scheme. It doesn't matter when you have a skilled athlete like Soward. He just gets up there, and a lot of this was done on his own, Brent. Watch it make people miss. Boom, boom. He makes this guy miss. He gets a block right there. Now it's just innate running skills, and he runs just as well after a pass reception. Well, Dick, he is one yard short of the 50-yard line with that 49-yard return, meaning the Trojans will open up with half a field to play on. And they will start off by putting the ball in the hands of DeLon Washington, who has started at that tailback spot. Brad Otten, 15, 7, and 1 as a starter, including that big Rose Bowl victory over in Pasadena against Northwestern. Chile's backs and receivers, R.J. Sauer. They will also try to get the ball in his hands as a wide receiver. He simply is a big play man tonight. John Robinson leads him now. It'll be second down and seven after the three-yard run for Washington. And Otten on second down. We'll put it up. Comes right down the middle. Complete. Miller, first down at the Irish 22-yard line. They got excellent play action that time, and it took a long time because it was a deep tailback fake. Now, that gave the receiver to the right side of your screen time to get downfield. He made a post move back up inside and then got behind the corner. He got on the strong safety right there and got in behind the corner. Good action. They had the tight end out in front of that corner to pull him up in that double zone look. Now, the offset Rodney Servants to the left. DeLon, I can throw it on first down, going to drop it off on a quick one over here to the right side. And Washington's got an alley out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Well, here is that offensive line. And, Dick, I think the one thing to keep in mind about the Trojans' offensive line is how young it is. Now, Brimer is a junior, but there are two freshmen in that line tonight. Milo moves in with Claridge. And they'll be working against a big, strong, tough front for the Irish. They clean up that front very well over there. Ronaldo win out of the Chicago area is one of the best. Number 48 right there. Down in his three-point stance and ready to go here on second down. And they just absolutely eat the Trojan running back up on that play. A quick look at their secondary for Notre Dame. And again, it always features some good young talent back there. It always seems when I do Notre Dame, somebody's coming along. Alan Rossum is perhaps the fastest of those back there. Deke Cooper is the freshman. He's the free safety. He's number one. So there's a great future ahead of a lot of those defensive backs back there. USC hasn't done a great job in scoring touchdowns in the red zone this year, but they've gotten down there, but they haven't put it in for six. Second and goal. Right side, and it is dropped by LaVale Woods. He started a run before he put it away. They had a little screen pass going, and all the way from up here, you could see him turn his head and look for the defense to converge, and he took his eye off the ball. See what I'm talking about here inside the 20-yard line. 73% isn't too bad. The 20 touchdown. Dick, it would uh, affect the Trojans a little bit in the early going with such great field position if they're unable to score a touchdown against this Irish defense. And uh, they have held up sometimes down here in the red zone. But as you can see, 77% of the time, the opposition has scored. Now they will come third down and up going straight back. Left corner of the end zone, incomplete. His intended receiver was Bastianelli. And Otten is down. They got to him right off the bat with real pressure. Now he has that black jacket on, Brent, but they, <laughs> there's still some pain involved. Defensive coordinator Bob Davey came after him. He gets back there, straight drop back, pedaling back. He looks back to his left. He sees the pressure. 
That's number two, Kenham Tatum, an inside linebacker not picked up properly that gets there, and he also gets whacked real good by another defender. It's an interesting decision for John Robinson. Otten has to leave. The senior is Matt Koffler. He's number 13. You would think he would come in, but Quincy Woods is going to be used at some time in this game, and with the fact that it is fourth down, obviously they can wait a series before they make up their quarterback decision because Abrams will come in and attempt a field goal. You'll see him from the right side of your screen, number two. He gets up in there. He leaps up over the back. Now, coming around the outside, there was Corey Miner, number four. Boy, I'll tell you, two linebackers like that, they can pressure a quarterback, and when you're wearing a flak jacket, you better not get hit. Dotton heads off to the sideline, and the Trojans will attempt a 20, a 30-yard field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. Jim Wren, the punter, number 17, he'll be the holder. He'll put it down, and the Trojans will attempt to get on the scoreboard first. This was a very disappointing moment for Trojan fans last week when Abrams missed one in regulation that would have beaten UCLA. Instead, they went into double overtime and one of the great triumphs by the Bruins. They pull out one of the best games of the year. From a fan standpoint. And now the Trojans strike first with the 30 yard field goal by Abrams. Lou Holtz and the Irish will have their first possession when we come back. That's Brad Otten, and let's quickly go down to Jack and Rue, Jack. Well, Brent, you can see they've loaded Brad Otten onto a go-kart, and they're going to take him into the locker room. Not for X-A's. I talked to the doctor. He said, all we want to do is get his shoulder pads and the flak jacket off and examine him further. He said, basically, that hit just aggravated the injury up above the sternum here and over in the high ribs. But they don't seem too concerned, at least not concerned enough, to go for X-rays. Jack, thank you. David Bell kicking off, and now the Irish game breaker. This is Alan Rossum. He has three punt returns for touchdowns, one kickoff return, and the Trojans defend him well. So Ron Hollis and the Irish will come out here on the 21-yard line with the first series under Lou Holtz. Two touchdowns and an interception against USC, but he's completed 61%. And our Chili's backs and receivers for the Irish, Andre Denson, 23. Not only is he a good runner, but he's also an excellent receiver. See number 23 there, and he'll line up behind Hollis. They'll offset the fullback. They like to run toward that offset fullback. They'll play action pass with him out of the backfield. Back behind the left side of that line, coach at the 26-yard line, and let's take a look at this Irish offensive line. Chris Clevenger and Mike Doughty are two big tackles. 300 pounders will be occupying those sides. There's been a lot of changes within the interior of that offensive line from time to time, and they're blocking on. Well, I'll tell you what, 96 in there, Mr. Russell, Big D. And he's simply one of the best in the college game when he decides to go hard. Georgia coaches say that time to time, the young man will take a snap or two off. And in a game like this, he needs to stand up on every snap. So we'll see how 96 does. Claiborne, of course, is the young linebacker there. He is number 55 out of Riverside, California. And there we can see Dalen McCutcheon. He is the great defensive back out of Walnut, California, number one, and with the play clock being tended to here by the officials, that's why we've got a little bit of delay. Ron Paulus goes back in. Dick, I think fans be interested in what you think about Ron Paulus. You know, I really like him, and he's not the classic passer, Brent, but you watch him on the practice field. All he does is throw completed passes. He's very good in the play-action game that they use here. They have a spread offense game plan to use tonight and spread uh, receivers across the field, and he threw well on Tuesday on the practice field I'm impressed with a guy if he goes to the right place in the pro football if that's what he decides to do and sticks with a great quarterback coach and everything else I think he has a real good shot and coach Holt says he doesn't want to be accused of the reason if he doesn't make it. he says every time a quarterback at Notre Dame struggles it's because of our offense he says that's baloney so the referee was telling Paulus how they would operate the 25 second clock here while it is being repaired at the Coliseum there is your classic eye look with Denson back in that eye formation, and he'll get his first carry behind the right side. And number 92, Kennel, is there to bring him down. Now, he's a pretty useful defensive lineman, too. He doesn't get the publicity that 96 does, but Matt Kennel will do the job. Yes, he does. And right now, 
Keith Burns, defensive coordinator for USC, threw a real game plan changeup on Notre Dame. He's playing an eight-man front and a three-deep secondary. Now, what that does for you is puts another man up in the line of scrimmage to get at the point of attack running-wise because they know that Notre Dame makes the commitment to run. Well, on third down, they've got an option in this situation. And they're going to run for it. Here's Denson. It's a block on the left side, and he picks up a Notre Dame first down at the 34-yard line. They got a real good push from the offensive line. No penetration by the Trojans that time. They had enough people up on there, but George Perry was on the line of scrimmage, and he couldn't get it pushed up field, Brent. Well, we see McCutcheon there. He's the standout of that defensive backfield. Brian Kelly will play some on the corner. And Grant Pearsall is going to be moved up into that linebacking spot a little bit tonight, too, isn't he? Yes, he was up there. Well, we can see that Mosley goes out as a slot man to the right for Palace here on first and ten for the Irish. Four receivers out and one running back in this formation. And the Trojans were going to rush, and they came up the middle with the run. They brought the fullback, Spencer, against that defensive front. What happens with an eight-man front, when you spread out three receivers to one side and one receiver to the other side, you have to take one of those guys out of there and get him involved in pass defense. Now, that loosens them up, and that's exactly what they did that time. They ran right up inside there. Now, offensive coordinator Dave Roberts said they came to make a commitment to run, but they do want to spread them out and throw the football. Champion and Nelson, the two wideouts for the Irish. The wingback comes around, and again, they run the fullback right straight ahead and out to the 49, and a first and 10 with Spencer carrying the ball and Mark Cusano making the stop. Well, that big offensive line in there, they like to trap Brent and pull the guard, and they're actually right now have Mike Rosenthal, who's healthy again now, back in there at that right guard. He's a six foot seven, 300 two-pound guy, and when he pulls across that center and traps a defensive tackle, he carries a load. I think somewhat efficient using the fullback here. Yes. Quietly moving down the field against this well, Georgia defense. Joe always uses the fullback. Joe. Lou always uses the fullback. Yeah, Joe Paterno likes that fullback, too. <laughs> 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 we saw that, didn't we? We sure have. And Ballas down a little play action. Roland sprinting, actually, over to the right side, down the sideline. And out of bounds, made that commitment, got in awfully deep over there as he sprinted toward that sideline. And real good coverage. And when you're sprinting like that, you really lose the field to attack. But it puts you out in front of where you want to throw the ball. But defensively, Dalen McCutcheon, the real fine corner, did a nice job. And Sammy Knight, number nine, comes up there and pressures him. Sammy Knight, an awfully good football player. One of the better players I've studied on game tape all year. He flashes into plays. Champions off to the right and Nelson to the left. The wide receivers now for the Irish. Denson. Back to the line of scrimmage. Russell, nothing else doing. His number 96 gets the job done. Well, Ron Paul is such an interesting young man. Jack Root. Brent, he's been through all sorts of things from high school when they talked about him going to Notre Dame. But one thing has followed Ron Paulus all through high school, all through his college career. Beneath his game jersey, there is a Berwick High School football jersey. And it says W-E-T-S-U. Stands for We Eat This Stuff Up. <laughs> well, he'd like to eat up this third and 11 right now. Kriplovich is tight end, has not been involved yet. He's got a slot over to the right, looking for time, in trouble, and Notre Dame forced the punt. That was Sammy Knight, who was putting the heat on the quarterback. He came off the corner. No one picked him up. I don't know what the protection was supposed to be, but I kind of doubt unless they had a hot receiver on that side, and that's not Lou's style of pass offense. Somebody should have picked him up. They brought three people to the one side, and that usually leaves one guy free. Over talking about it with Holtz. And Hunter Smith punt this ball for the Irish. Beautiful punt. Fair catch signal. Too much. It's a fake as it goes on into the end zone, and that'll come on out at the 20-yard line. So the deep man held up that coverage a little bit, a 52-yard punt, but they lose 20 yards at the other end of it. On hand at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And the veteran, Matt Koppler, will replace the injured Brad Otten. He's out of Rosemead, California. He had to replace Otten last week in that shootout against UCLA. And he'll just hand it off to 
Washington on first down to the 24 yard line a run of four yards with Ronaldo Wynn making the stop for the Irish. Mike Riley the offensive coordinator for USC told me in their running game they're going to make a real emphasis to get the ball upfield start in a direction and then get it upfield because Notre Dame linebackers flow so well they'd like to think that they can get a cut back up inside there. Sermon again at that fullback spot. And oh. he'll get the call, but Notre Dame was ready for it. Made one step, and he was hit by Wynn and Maiden. Ronaldo so 48 and 42, coach. Yeah, I know it. Ronaldo wins an awfully good football player. He has good quickness, and he liked it. He's a senior. He's going to graduate. He's going to go to law school if he doesn't make it in the National Football League and visiting with him Tuesday on campus. Really put together. Very, very strong. He's the leader of the defense. As he plays, the defense plays. back they wanted the screen incomplete under enormous pressure that time and again it was Ronaldo win so the senior is off to a big start defensively for the Irish you know on screens you allow off it defensive linemen to get up field quick on you but you don't want him to get up that quick they're trying to block him with a tight end that time because protection was going away and John Allred 89 who's just coming off the injury list himself was trying to block him and didn't do a real good job he's a physical blocker but not a pass blocker well, here comes one of the great punters in the Pac-10, Jimmy Wren. Ooh, and pressure. he was under pressure, and he nailed it. Over Denson's head, takes a bounce, and the Trojans will down it at the 25-yard line. How long was that? 51-yard punt. My gosh. Brad Otten reappears from the tunnel. Let's go to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, the doctors have looked over Brad Otten, and they have determined that he has aggravated the bruise to his sternum. I asked the doctors, does that mean that he won't be able to play? They said, what they're going to do, bring him out, have him go through the throwing motion, the drop back motion, see just how much pain he is in, and they said it'll be up to Brad whether he wants to play or not. Dick, that was a heck of a punt under pressure by Wren, showing us immediately why he is so good. He has 16 of them coming into this game over 50 yards, Brent. That and he hit another one. That's yeah. 17, eh? Denson made the most out of it, spinning for a couple of yards before. Big D, Russell, number 96, bringing him down again. He's capable of dominating a football game when his motor is running full speed. When you watch him, I tell you, he can dominate the guy in front of him and then get to the ball as well as any defensive tackle we have seen all year, and we've seen some good ones. He's just a little bit immature. He's got another year to play here, and I hope he stays in place because he's going to be a real significant factor on a good football team next year. Of four wide receivers only. Kirk Plovich is one of the wideouts. He is way out to the left side of this formation for Paulus. Paulus rolls in that direction, looks for his veteran tight end, couldn't find him, and he is smashed out of bounds at the 27 by Chris Claiborne, the freshman from Riverside, California. They wanted to run a little, they wanted to run a shuffle pass to so pull the backside guard here and try to get up underneath it. Paulus will come back out of there and he's gonna flip it up there, try to, he couldn't. The defense took it away and Jamie Spencer couldn't get the pitch. Good defense that time, good penetration. Penetration really annihilates a lot of offensive plays. They're down in seven for the Irish. The run balance to the top of the field. changes the call, pointing to his two wideouts to that unbalanced side. I bet he goes to the slot. <laughs> Don't they usually? Here he comes. Got his fumble! Trojans have got it! Jimmy Knight. Knight at the 30. Inside the 20 and still going. Sammy Knight to the six-yard line. And Sammy Knight is one of the great men. That's the fifth straight game with an interception and a total of six for the Trojans. That fumble on the ground is what he picked up. They'll rule that that was a fumble recovery. Right. But, you know, he returned one last week against UCLA for 74 yards, an interception. I thought they would throw the ball in the slot because the corner was back off him deep. They get it out there to Mosley, number five. He gets it tucked away, but not properly. It was loose there, but cuts and stripped him, and here comes Sammy Knight, and he can make the plays. I cannot emphasize that enough, not only as a pass defender in this situation, but as a run defender. 
It's important to cash in on your turnover opportunities. Sauer, nothing doing. That was number two defensively, and that was Tatum for the Irish. Well, Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, told me they were very concerned about Sauer on the screens. He's an excellent runner, as he's already demonstrated on kickoff returns, and they were going to rely on just guts and pursuit. They weren't going to do anything specific to try to take that away other than mental recognition and then fly to the football. Next year as coach. Next year as head coach. Had a nice time visiting with him Tuesday. He says he doesn't know what role to play right now. Defensive coordinator under Lou Holtz. Probably the only defensive coordinator Holtz didn't run off. Last thing, a hit caught in the back under pressure. Going to be sacked and down at the 21-yard line. Number four, Corey Miner, the sophomore. They've had sack problems. You know, the first three games of the year, or four games of the year, they had three sacks. Since then, they had 24 coming into this one. They just have a lot of trouble pass protecting. And when you put two true freshmen in the offensive line, you're going to have some problems. That takes more time to learn from a fundamental technique standpoint. I asked Bob Davey what he learned from Lou Holtz. He says, you know what I really learned, number one, was mental toughness. How to concentrate under pressure when everybody's yelling at you. And he said, that there's more pressure at Notre Dame than any other place. I learned mental toughness, he said. Third and 21. We'll line and up time right. out because Miller was on the wrong side of the formation. This is a great defensive series to turn the ball over like that. And for Notre Dame to come in and shut him out right now, that's a heck of a series. Only a field goal in this game so far, but it's early in the Coliseum. The Trojans lead it by three. ABC. Here are the Trojans leading Notre Dame by a field goal. Come up with third down. Poplar is replaced. Otten gets time. Tosses to the end zone and over the head of his tight end. Incomplete. And it's field goal time again as Gilbo was defending that for the Irish. Good good coverage downfield the pattern took a long time they were trying to get the tight end of the corner good coverage down there you'll see him right to the middle of your screen number 89 real fine tight end one of the better tight ends in the country especially when he's hundred percent and he's not playing hundred percent tonight John Allred a little nicked up and now Abrams back for his second field goal attempt of the game the punter Wren is the holder as you look from behind him here for this 38 yard attempt Four for seven on the year from that distance. Loves that distance. Yes. Getting three points with that turnover is critical. Real good defensive job, though, of preventing the score, preventing the big play. Good fight in the Irish tonight. Well, John Robinson, uh, he's used to being ahead in the first half. Hey, eh, Jack Root? Yeah, Brent, and also, you know, you got to wonder whether it's maybe important to the media, it may be important to the alumni for John Robinson to win this game. But last night, the seniors in the team, during their team meeting, sat down and said, Coach, it's not important to us. What's important to us is that this team shows Lou Holtz what we are made of. It seems that Lou came out somewhere during the course of the week and said he didn't think that the USC football team played like champions. The seniors stood up and said, what we want to do, Coach, is make sure that Lou Holtz is fine regular season game is one that he always remembers as a loser. You know, all that stuff doesn't make a darn bit of difference. <laughs> About six plays into the game, you forget all that. You're playing football, you're wiping the sweat off your forehead, and some guy's hitting you in the mouth, and you forget all that stuff that happened in the locker room. I learned that a long time ago. The Trojans, coach, kick it <laughs> off again. And the Irish have changed the deep man, Robert Farmer. And he Number 31 checks back in now. So he'll be returning this kickoff. They were raving about how he's come along this senior year and played this year. When I was on campus there Tuesday, they, they really like Robert Farmer. Not going to get a chance. Out of bounds, he'll come out to the 35-yard line because of the penalty. So our officiating crew tonight is a split crew from the Pac-10 and the Mid-American Conference. Bill Richardson here is our referee, and he's from the Pac-10. Familiar face out here along the Pacific Network. You know, I never liked split crews as a football coach. I, the ball I never did. I never felt First down. they worked as well together. You know, it's not a crew that's been together all year, and they work a little bit at trying to please each other rather than doing a great job with the game. Now, that's an old, old has-been coach's opinion. I don't know that you're a has-been coach. First down now for 
Thomas and the Irish. Lovings, the tight end, is off to the right. And Thomas has been changing up a lot of plays in the line of scrimmage. Denson bangs off that first hit to the 42-yard line. That's a strong run of seven yards on first down. And you love to sit in second three, don't you, Coach? You bet. When you have a fullback like Jamie Spencer, who's replacing Mark Edwards, and I, I didn't think anybody could step in and play fullback like Mark Edwards, their fine captain who's hurt a knee and not playing. and might make it back for a bowl game, but Jamie Edwards has stepped in there and played very well. He has the physical stature at six foot, 247. He did a nice job blocking on that one. Spencer's out of Monroe, Louisiana. Blocking on that one, and that frees Denson. Denson 40, 35, across the 30, and the Irish threaten. Pearsall runs him down. Spencer did a nice job of kicking out, but the defender did not constrict the play. He didn't come in and take him on physically. He can't play that passively. But the ball's coming at you, and the fullback's coming to kick you out. You better take him on. We'll take a look. Follow the fullback to the right as he goes for his kickout block. You know, there's other people involved. Good blocking there. They pull the guard. They got the kick out right there. See that big lane up in there? The defender has to constrict it. Good job of running by this young man. He can really fly. 31 is the number of the moment. That was the gain. And Farmer, number 31, checks in and replaces Denson. He'll take a break. And they'll run Spencer. You can see movement down in the line. And the penalty flag has been thrown by the line judge over here on the near side and he'll sort this out with Richardson and be underway. Well I imagine it's a long sad night for Gator fans. Meanwhile for Seminole fans they have to be soaring. Bobby Bowden and Florida State headed for the Nokia Defense Sugar Bowl no doubt. Outside in the neutral, neutral zone at the snap first and five. And now the question is who will the Seminoles be playing down there in New Orleans There's an interesting scenario. Obviously Nebraska would figure to have the inside track if they beat Texas next Saturday in St. Louis, but nothing seems quite as clear cut as it was uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now that the, the Gators have been knocked off their perch. Here's Collis now bringing the Irish up to the line. Farmer and Spencer are again the running backs. First and five. Four down linemen for the Trojans. Here comes the blitz. Knight's coming. And Farmer. Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. They were coming from both sides that time with that pressure look. Cusano, the linebacker on the right side, the sophomore from Texas, made the stop. See, that night was a strong safety here for two years, and they played him linebacker this year as an experiment early, and he did a, a tremendous job. I mean, he'll flash from the left side of your screen up in the corner there, and he turns it back to the inside where the rest of the defense is just waiting for the ball carrier. Good change-up call by Coach Burns, the defensive coordinator. Papadakis. Checks in as one of the inside linebackers. Denson returns as a running back. Second down and five. Denson slams through to the 18-yard line. Nice looking running back. You know what they're doing? They're countering with their fullback. Now, Notre Dame is a big ISO lead play. Lead the fullback with the tailback carrying the ball behind him. Right now, what they're doing, Brent, is sending the fullback one way and the tailback the other way. Now, that freezes those linebackers and allows those big offensive guards at 300 pounds to get on them and also on those tackles. A little change up in game plan. Pretty good percentage down there inside the 20-yard line. And the folks, third down and short here for the hour. He's got to go for it. Couldn't get it off. Kennelly was there, and he goes down at the 20-yard line. Obviously, when you said he's got it, he's you got saw it. an open receiver. Oh, he's yeah. got to throw right away. You got to go. Yeah, you can't wait that long. Third and short, you're only looking for a yard. He had him right there. Pete Kerflevich was coming off the line of scrimmage. If he throws it over the inside, he's right here. He'll come off to the inside. Right here, he's open. It just took a little too long for him to recognize it. There he is, getting the ball. See, and he's looking a little bit too much to the back out of the flat. Now, you don't know what progression he was coached to read that. Short guy to tight end, but third and short, I would have looked deep first, then we'll throw the first down second. They forced some turnovers down there, and the Trojans will call a timeout. Looking at this fourth down play, it is fourth and three. And he wants to talk about it with his defensive unit right now. John Robinson is right there alongside of him. Remind you about some pretty good golf coming away tomorrow on the network. Shell's wonderful world of golf. A couple of great veterans, Tom Kite and Ben Crenshaw in that. 
And then, of course, the back nine, the Skins game. That's tomorrow. So a good golf day here on ABC. When you go in these golf things, do you ever play golf with them prior to it all get going? Somebody will play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I just think of Dick. Would you play for money? I'm thinking of that. Look at the cash. Holy Tom heck. wants it, huh? That's not chicken feed. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty thousand for the first hole tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost a weak paycheck for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here on this fourth down, what do you think Lou Holtz has got up his sleeve here, Coach? Well, you know, Lou is really one of those guys It's hard to predict what he's going to do. You know, he, he will do uh, the opposite of what the opponent thinks he's going to do many, many times. And he has fooled me many times up in the booth as we've presented him over the years. I think I would go ahead and kick the field goal. Well, I, that's what I was just about to ask you. And you're only down yeah. six, and Miami a big one, huh? Denson goes out as a receiver. And Farmer is the running back behind Pollock's. They might throw the ball. They have a little gimmick pass. They throw the ball outside on. Looks like they're going to blitz him. Here they come. Option. Hey, Lou did it. First down. Farmer's got it out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Lou loves option football. He really does. He gets them spread out all the way across the field. The quarterback will come right down the line of scrimmage. They don't block Perry number 88. They flip it out there. Everybody's blitzing up inside. The tackle has to be made by someone coming from the secondary. Real good change of call. He spread them out, think they're going to throw the ball, and then he runs the option. You'll see the red zone going up. 70%, 23 touchdowns. Not too bad a percentage touchdown. On this. Spencer dashes to the eight-yard line. He is a basher too. He, you know, he's he looks like Martin Edwards' twin brother. I mean, they practice the same, they block the same, they bang. A little war going on here on the right side of your screen by night. Oh, <laughs> that's big tight end tied up or no? It's yeah, the, the other, other tight end, Coretta, number forty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Knight can fight too. Second down. The ball is at the eight-yard line. Irish can get a first down inside the two-yard line in this series. A couple of tight ends. And they will run Spencer to the three-yard line short of that first down with third down coming up again. You know what they did that time? They opened the splits up of their right guard that time. That widens the defensive tackle and moves them away, the nose guard away from the defensive tackle. Then they run off that block. He went outside at that time, but it also allows you to get a cutback in there. Dick, that yards. option came Third so clean on this current drive. You'd be very tempted to show it again. He likes the load option down here in the goal line, meaning he fakes the fullback, and the fullback goes around and blocks the man assigned to take the quarterback. Brings motion over to the right. Here it is. And here it is. Collis on the keeper is not going to get there. Yeah. It took a little too much time to develop the reverse pivot. I think Ron runs that much better to his right than he does to his left. It's easier for a quarterback. When you're going to your right, you're flipping with your right hand and everything else. But good penetration. Give credit to the Trojans. They got upfield. Now, this is Knight, and uh, he about to just shut up and play. He's a good player. He doesn't need to chip at it. That's the end of the first quarter. The Trojans threaten twice. They settle for a couple of field goals, and they lead it after the first 15 minutes. It's the rivalry, and USC leads Notre Dame six to nothing. This is Ford Escort. Did you know that it's new? If you knew that it's new, did you know the wagon's new too? The engine is new, the suspension improved. A safety cell protects, but stays out of view. It's quieter inside to shush out the out. But for those who simply must twist and shout, there's premium speakers on a new stereo, so you can get every note and get it to go. This Escort is great. This Escort is nice. This Escort has a very sensible price. So why not check out the newest Escort this season? We've given you every rhyme, and rhymed every reason. It's just like MJ said to me last week. Penny Hardaway has unlimited potential. Unlimited.
it. Yeah, right. MJ said that? Yes, but you're missing the whole point. It's your team this season, Penny. Your team. It's time for you to take your game to a whole nother level. When did you talk to Jordan? At my celebrity golf tournament, the Little Penny Classic. He kills me off the team, but I get him on the green. Inside your car's fuel system, there's a constant battle between good and evil. So if you have a dirty fuel system, none of these dark forces can match the power of STP Complete Fuel System Cleaner. STP's most technologically advanced fuel system cleaner ever. Dirt has met its match. STP Complete Fuel System Cleaner. Will she say, I love it? You shouldn't have. It's just what I wanted. Or will she say, nothing at all? The Diamond Solitaire Necklace. This Christmas goes straight for the heart. One of the world's most enduring symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in nearby Carson, California, then providing these beautiful aerial pictures. 1996 marks the 71st consecutive year that a Goodyear Blimp has flown over a major sporting event. And right now it is hovering above as the offense of Notre Dame comes up with a fourth and two. Denson is behind Spencer. They can get a first down, but inside the one yard line, Denson on second effort bangs across the goal line. And let's see, there's no signal coming up. Well, if he didn't get the touchdown, he got a first down. So first, first down. down is the mark. Big, big Jamie Spencer leads the way. That big fullback at 250 there took on the initial defender and that allowed him to go ahead and slide in there but I thought he scored how come USC always gets those calls at this rough out here so hey, John Robinson had, had many things go his way this year I mean don't I remember one in the Rose Bowl against Michigan which hey, I don't know but anyway it is first day goal here for the Irish timeout. Yeah, running out and time. the play clock coming down he had to burn the timeout so, Dick, that'll give us an opportunity to take a breath and uh, we need it for a fast first quarter. <laughs> it went by quickly. Boy, when you run the ball like that, let's see. Notre Dame score, zero, SC six, rush yards, Notre Dame picking it up. USC, I can't believe USC is a minus four yards rusher. Total yards, 130, total domination by Notre Dame. Time of possession, Notre Dame controlling it right there. Points off a turnover right there. Three points. You know, it's interesting. Notre Dame has converted two fourth down plays into first downs on this drive against the Trojan defense. And Lou Holtz has not even been thinking field goals. He's been going on fourth down on this you drive. Know, regardless of what Lou says, I kind of believe if this is your last game maybe in your career at Notre Dame, you throw all the different things to the wind and let it all hang out and get after it, you know? Wouldn't you? Well, if he successfully gets after it, it won't be the last game. <laughs> That's right. He but that might be, big that, bucks. that also could be the reason it wouldn't be his last game. <laughs> First and goal for Notre Dame, the Trojan defense. The goal line, look. Russell gets down there at that right defensive tackle. Farmer and Spencer will be the running backs for the Irish. The big pullback. In. Six for Notre Dame, and an extra point would put him ahead. Jamie Spencer ties it. Lou Holt says he holds his breath on every kicking play. He says nothing is automatic. Good job of giving the ball to the big, strong guy. Jimmy Sanson. Hunter Smith, the holder. And hooking a little bit, but it was good. 
Spencer's touchdown, Sanson's extra point. Puts Notre Dame ahead for the first time, and we'll be back after these messages from our ABC stations. Becker down, the, the blockers took him to the inside. It was a real good motion block and a kick out block right here, and therefore, touchdown. They slanted inside, which you normally do. Now the linebacker's got to get in there and fill it, and he didn't get it done. And Kraplevich, good blocking tight end. He is a fine football player. When a guy goes down inside, he can collapse him all the way to the inside, and that opens the hole. And it's a little bit too much of a hole sometimes for a linebacker to fill. Notre Dame 7, USC 6. Sanson preparing, and there is Sauer the whiz, and he's going to change spots with Miller. He shuffles, and now he is over to the near side. Trojans are trying to hide Sauer, so they had a late move, and Notre Dame counters by kicking it along the ground to the short man, one of the blockers, one of the tight ends for Southern California, and he gets it up to about the 32-yard line, and that will be their field position, and perhaps not bad strategy. In no, situation. not at all. That was Travis Davis carrying the ball rather than Sauer, who's averaging, like you said, over 30 yards a return, and I think that's a good decision. Yeah, Travis Hall was the man who uh, brought the ball back, one of the tight ends in that situation. He also yeah. plays H-back for him something. He will go to the left side of the formation as the Trojans have him in that H-back look right now. Lone running back, so they'll come to line with Walters getting his first series of the game, and he is out to the 38-yard line. And Woods has checked in. Quincy Wood. This was planned all along, regardless of what was going to happen to Brad Otten tonight. We were going to see the redshirt freshman from Rich East High School back in Illinois. Now, here was one of the most highly touted option quarterbacks in the land. In fact, Notre Dame was in on the recruiting of him, and the young man, Woods, preferred to come out here to the West Coast and take a crack. Now, they've got some bootleg plays in, a couple of options. They want to take a look, try to loosen things up against this Notre Dame defense. So let's see what the young man can do here. You know, John Robinson said he wasn't concerned about all the complicated phases of the offense for the freshman, but he was really concerned about the simple things, just like picking the snap from center. And also looking at the 25 second, second clock. clock. See, the little things grab up and shake up a, a freshman quarterback. And, you know, he's only been in, I think, a couple of games this year through one pass against Illinois. Looking at the wristband and uh, Robinson's staff. And he sighs. Oh, my, he says. <laughs> I knew I'd have a year like this. <laughs> They all have it sooner or later. If you stay in this business long enough, all right? Second Nobody down and nine. Play pick and Woods rolls right and throws low, incomplete. And the pass was intended for 89. All red is tight in. Now here is Otten out there with some words of encouragement for the young man on that far sideline, reminding him of exactly where the clock is located here at the Coliseum. And going in that direction for USC, it has not been that easy to see. It's up the tunnel, up high out there. You know, in many ballparks around the country, if you look right straight ahead, but here you have to look off to the left, and you can see the seconds starting to tick away on the clock, which was, uh, that's the one, of course, at the other end of the stadium, which he is not looking at. He'd have to hold the back of his head. This is third down and nine. Solid motion. motion. Being chased, firing, complete. Soward finally got it, but the penalty flag thrown on the illegal motion, and that one is coming back. A freshman thrown to a freshman. Now, the one freshman threw the ball. He executed properly, but the gifted wide receiver, kick returner, was moving forward at the snap. He should never do that. All he has to do as he moves toward the ball is look at it. You're not blind. He can catch the football with two hands, so he knows he can see it. Five yards. Illegal motion against the offense. The motion man turned up field prior to the snap. Repeat third down. <laughs> John. That negates an 18-yard gain. But it doesn't negate the fact that this kid can throw the ball. That ball was humming, wasn't it? <laughs> Here he comes. If they get him the ball in the open field, he'll put it in the end zone. Would have counted in the Grey Cup championship. <laughs> That's right. Third down. Watch out quarterback draw with that kind of guy. Three wide outs. Sour slot left side. Now he breaks out. Woods was looking for him right away. He's covered. Goes deep right side and out of bounds. You know, he almost did it again. If the official wanted to be picky, he could have called him for moving forward again. 
He started to move forward early. He doesn't have to know the snap cam. He's moving toward the ball. He better concentrate. He could have been called again. So Jimmy Wren, Boy, the leading punter in the Pac-10, checks in right now. And Alan Russell, who has returned three punts for touchdowns this year, back deep. That's a low line driver, not much hang time. From the 23, here he comes. Rossum has a hole, darts back to the left. Rossum fumble! SC recovers. And there is an Irish player injured on the play. The Trojans recover at the 44-yard line. As you said, he has returned three for touchdowns. This one is not. The ball is a little bit loose in his arm, a little bit high. The elbow's out away from the body there. When that happens, really a good a double pop. One side of the ball, the other side of the ball, it's loose. Oh, now that was Prentice Hill, a sophomore defensive back who recovered it. And meanwhile, injured player for Notre Dame, and it could have been Rossum who took a hit. Let's confirm that. That is who it is, number 15. And not only is that a huge loss for the return team, but that makes them shorthanded in the defensive backfield. No question. He is their number one cover guy, and they were going to flop him and have him play sour man-to-man -man many times during the ball game. Boy, that's a big loss. And see what happens many times if you have a man-to-man -man coverage scheme in your game plan, Brent, then you have to eliminate that scheme and go ahead and play. Now Covington will come back in, and Devon Harper, a freshman, will be at the other corner. So it is that's the, a big uh, loss. Right arm, and you can see just how talented the young man is. Lou Holt said he did not want to turn the ball over on his side of the field. And they, they will change back the quarterback They will go back with the veteran in this field position from the 44th and off to Walters. And Walters barges close to the 40-yard line. About a four-yard gain here on first down. Now, obviously, I don't think Woods can be too depressed over there on the sideline. The plan was to bring him in for a series. Right? And the coaches here with this field position want to go back to more experience and talk to the young man on that far and side. And execute another phase of the running game that maybe Woods is not really, you know, smooth in right now. You know, that Tennessee score is kind of interesting. I'll get into that in just a moment here. This is Walters. Wow. Off. Great pursuit. Yeah, the Irish are awfully good along that front. They're very Boy, talented they linebackers and defensive linemen. Oh, yeah. Three of them will hit you at a time. Yeah. Yeah. They can really run. That is Harper coming up from the defensive back spot. I'm going to say about Tennessee, not overly impressive. And of course, Notre Dame attempting to become impressive. Appearance is very important now as these teams buy for a couple of spots in the Alliance Bowl lineup. You can see these people can all run coming down from the back side there. That's Deborah Harper. That's a blitz for the guy coming out of the secondary. Here is a throwing play for the Trojans. Third down. Coughlin fires in Miller, the intended receiver. In front of him, Harper, the coverage man on that side for the Irish. That was nice coverage by the young freshman. Some people might recognize Harper name. His brother plays for the Chargers here in Southern California. But he can close. He did a nice job that time of just moving in there, going after the freshman, but he stepped up. So the Trojans cannot move the ball with their senior quarterback, and Wren will punt it. No one back deep for the Irish. That's how important Rossum is. There's no one else can really turn a punt. Obviously, he's going to let this one roll down back there. And they were also making sure it was not a fake. They cannot down it. Oh, the Irish get the most out of that. And Wren will be shaking his head in disappointment. We'll be right back. Yesterday's antifreeze coolants don't offer today's multi-metallic engines enough corrosion protection from extreme hot and cold. They need Xerox with its one-of-a-kind patented formula, not just to protect radiators, but also water pumps and cylinder heads. So use Xerox. Otherwise, your engine could be extremely unprotected. Xerox. 
extreme protection for today's engines. Chevy Blazer with the exclusive driver control system. A little security in an insecure world. You've seen exercise videos, but never like this. It's the home video exercise program that's totally free. A full hour with new videos. Funniest home videos, ABC Sunday. The Los Angeles Coliseum, Notre Dame and USC. We would expect we've got some heavy hitting in this classic rivalry. And let's get an update on all the injuries. Let's go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, first let's update you on Alan Ross. And you saw that tremendous hit. It was a helmet to his right upper arm. It's a bruised humerus. Now what the staff has done is they're icing it down. They're going to try and protect it. They don't know whether he will be back or not. Offensive guard Mike Reisenthal is out for the night. He is injured and has a separated shoulder, Brent. First down. He's audible against that eight-man front. And Denson holds the side. And he makes his way to the 29-yard line. That's a nine-yard gain for Audrey on first down. To get out there like that against an eight-man front, your tight end has to do a great job, and I'm sure that he did. Kraplevich had to collapse the corner to allow the pulling lineman to get out there and make the play. He's an awfully good blocker. I had a nice visit with him. Tuesday, and he'd like to play in the NFL if he can. Chances are that he can. Second down and one, Coach. Palace brings the Irish up. Denson will be the lone running back. Nelson in a wide receiver. Two tight ends in this formation for the Irish. Here's Denson. Easy first down for Notre Dame. Plus, and he's run out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Well, Denson has that. That should have been a no-game play because Willie Lowry, number 91, the defense end, forced the play back, make it bend back away from the line of scrimmage, and they didn't get any pursuit there right now. Here we are. Kerplevich trying to hold him up there. Lowry knocked him back a little bit. Now he's working inside out. There should be somebody in a maroon gold jersey right there to make the play. But Denson has that real good burst as well. 1,000-yard rusher. Continuing to rotate, giving him a break. Farmer now in that running back spot. They'll use the fullback. Spencer leads the way. Farmer behind him has the sideline. 45 smashes his way and he's out of bounds near midfield. Did you see the wallop, the blow he delivered as he was being hit? Mike Dowdy, the offensive right tackle, jumps out right there. He does a good job, keeps his pads forward, keeps pushing up fields. He, it just stick and stays. Joe Moore, the offensive line coach, does a great job with these kids, Brett, fundamentally. He stays on them, teaches the real good techniques. Notre Dame leads it by a point, 7-6. Ball near midfield. Here is second quarter from the Los Angeles Coliseum. First down for the Irish. Slot formation to the left. When Lou Holtz comes, he comes to run. This time they're going to throw a quick screen out to the left hand side. And, oh, number one, that's why he's one of the best. Dalen McCutcheon just ate the play up over there. Not a chance in the world for Emmett Mosley. See, I think it was man coverage, and he just saw what was happening right there. His man went in to block. He read the block. He just came up and made the play. At the top of your screen, you'll see what I'm talking about. Slot man moves out there like that. Outside man moves into crack. Dalen reads it properly and comes up there just like a linebacker and pops it for a no game. Second down and 11. Champion split out to the right of Pallas in this formation for the Irish. Night is coming. Pallas gets time. Incomplete. See, the offensive line did a real nice job of pass protecting. They look like a, like a, a drill team out there when they set in that situation, Brent. They just sort of all 
together, work their feet and their hands properly. Awfully well coached offensive line by Joe Moore. And he's been doing it for a long time. When Knight came off that corner, they just kind of passed him along. Yeah, they just, that's right. That's what he was not a fact. Yeah, they just all slid the gate out there and closed it up. Animated defensive call. Lou Holtz stuck in the sideline. We won't be seeing that very often. They're in an unbalanced formation now. Down toward the bottom of the screen. Third down at 11, and Hollis straight back has pressure. Steps away from Russell. Comes to the near side, incomplete. Big D in on Paulus that time. He stepped up and released the ball out of bounds. When you get in that unbalanced formation, see your tight end is not eligible. So you only have two receivers to throw the ball to. They had more defenders than receivers to throw to. He actually just threw that ball away. Hunter Smith out to punt for Notre Dame. Tight defensive struggle here in the first half. A couple of field goals for the Trojans. One touchdown of the game scored by Notre Dame. Parker and Cook are back deep for the Trojans. Nice punt. Boy, has he improved. Parker, I'll let this one go. Irish try to stop it. It'll go into the end zone for a plane. It'll come out of the 20 yard line. So we'll take a break. The Trojans trail it, but only by a point, seven to six. I would think from Eli Brent Musburger and Dick, uh, the Trojans just can't get that running game going this season. Five yards rushing right now against 118 for Notre Dame. The defensive front for Notre Dame right now is dominating line of scrimmage, and that should not happen. There is a number of 300 pounders in the SC offensive line. Now they're young kids, but by the end of the year, by the end of the year, they're not young kids any longer. On the other side, Ron Paulus on the telephone with his assistant coaches. Here's the move. So finally. They bust one on first down, and it's a 12-yard gain, and that is Delon Washington, the young man who was out several games because of a suspension. John Robinson, Dick, described him to us earlier today as a melancholy type of guy, Washington. He said he really hasn't run with that sparkle that he showed prior to his problem with the NCAA, and obviously John and the Trojan coaches are hoping for an explosion here tonight before this one ends. That was his best run of the game so far. Now on first down, Sermons bouncing back to the left, and he goes down at the 37-yard line. And uh, with Koffler in there right now, we want to find out about Brad Otten. Uh, Jack, are there plans to bring number 10 back in the game, or is he out for the night? Well, Brent, you can see that he's favoring that injured sternum by holding his hand the way he is. But I talked to the trainer, and he said, look, what we're going to do is rest him for the rest of this quarter, go back in at halftime, take the flak jacket off, take a good hard look at it, see if we can fix it with tape, et cetera, and don't count him out. If we need him in the second half, we may use him. Well, here's the toss, Washington. Another good run, Dick, so finally. See what they did, they made a commitment, Brent. They made a commitment, finally. They made it, we're gonna run the football, we're gonna let these big, large butts come off the ball and get after people straight ahead. Now, there's some mothers might object. Well, I mean, that's coaching talk, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean? They let them get the weight for it and go after people. That time, Ken Bowen, the big offensive tackle, did a good job of turning his defensive end out, and they cut back under, underneath. So it's a first down on the gain of seven yards. The ball out to the 44-yard line. Continuing to use heavy running backs here at USC behind this young offensive line. This is Walters. He'll try to stretch it out and turn up the field. And he's got six yards, and that's out to midfield. So this by far the most impressive running series of the night for the Trojans. It looks like they went over to the bench and they plugged them all in. Juice them up a little bit, come out there and say, hey guys, let's just go fight the war, not get fancy, not have any excuses, just come off the ball. That time it was not come off the ball blocking, it was pull blocking. See, big Brimer, number 67, pow, he gets a good knock. Look at that, that's a manhandle block, and he's big enough, he's 6'3", 300 pounds. You know, we saw a picture of Rossum, who has returned, and uh, with that first play, is told us, Walters, short of the first down, he's jammed at about the 48-yard line, and there was Ronaldo win again. He got off to a big start, and he's in on another stop, number 48 there. You can look for Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, to change up his defense, too. Now he's liable to jump into an eight-man odd front like that, or uh, what they call the bare front, and come after him with real pressure, especially on this third and two. Here comes the third down for the Trojans, trailing it by a point. 
Ball at the Notre Dame, 48-yard line. Fumble, Walters on one hop is going down, and this will force USC to punt. See, they stopped themselves. They stopped themselves. Now, maybe the defense would have stopped it, but just execution within the backfield stopped that one. It's a deep pitch. That's just a fundamental pitch. Hits him right in the bad place, the hands. Coach, sometimes that's... Go ahead. What do you think about USC using so many running backs? Instead, I remember the old days. <laughs> you, you come to the tailback and you're you say, you're carrying a 35 time. You're setting me up because you know what my response is going to be. <laughs> you're setting me up. I wouldn't do that, Coach. Yes, you would. <laughs> Denson is back. He got it inside the five. Gamble down he goes. That was not a very smart move by a smart young man. Well, you see, they lose their number one punt returner because of that injury. They make a change. But he's been back there 13 times this year. And that is Bullshit making the stop for USC. He gave him plenty of room to field that punt. And this is going to be very tough field position. The Irish will be careful. I would like to know what Lou Holtz is saying right now. <laughs> we couldn't put it on the air. That you should never back inside the 10 yard line and field the football. That's a cardinal, cardinal sin. Even at Notre Dame, that's a sin. Coming out from the shadow of their own goal. First down. Big D Russell 96 down at that right tackle. Fullback right straight ahead. Russell and friends are there in the middle, and the fullback gets a couple of yards out of that, making second down and eight now coming up for Notre Dame. If the Trojans can pin the Irish back down here and force a punt, if nothing else, they'd get decent field position. Lou Holtz has other plans. This is when you are glad you are a good running team. When you're down here and your back's to the wall, you can put weight for it and come after people. Denson, the lone running back, as Palace makes the call. Defensive the line. They're not lined up right. They want to move Knight in. Denson steps over to the left. Kennelly in on that stop, number 92. The perimeter got all fouled up in alignment for some reason that time. It didn't affect them back inside there, but it could have because they had too many guys out covering two guys and not enough guys in to play run defense. You know, Joe Moore, the offensive line coach, told me I was on the field there, and I look at his offensive line, and I said, geez, we're good-looking kids. He says, I don't allow fat guys. He says, I tell them, the only thing good about fat is it can help you float, and that's all. <laughs> They'll try not to float another five yards here. On third down, they'll try to stay firm and get all. They're taking a long time to get lined up. Three wide receivers. Pallas is going to attempt to throw for it. Under pressure, throws it high, out of bounds. And the Irish are forced to punt. It is three and out. Little pushing and shoving over there on the far sideline. We've had a bit of that here in the first half. <laughs> the old big tight end comes by somebody and you see that little inadvertent shoulder he throws on the way by. He is a big tight end. He's 6'5", 265. See, he wanted to throw the quick out to the tight end. See, set up right now and throw it, but the coverage took it away, so he had to hold the ball. And when you have to hold the ball that close to the line of scrimmage, you better get rid of it. And that's what he did. We've seen a number of block punts this year. Smith is standing back in the end zone. The Trojans put 10 men up on the front. They blocked three of them this year. He does get it off. Parker is the return man for the Trojans. Fielded at the 46. Good cutback up to the 40 and down. So the Trojans working again with excellent field position, but they have been unable to score touchdowns. We'll be right back. DC Sports brought to you dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road in Miller Lite. And you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite. Life is good. And these aerial pictures are courtesy of the Goodyear Blunt Eagle based in Carson, California. Tonight's pilot, Nick Nicolari from Hartford, Connecticut. Nick, nice to have you along with us on a beautiful evening here in Southern California. USC with the ball at the Notre Dame 40 yard line. The Irish lead it, but only by a point. And on first down, the Trojans get to the 35 yard line. Mike Barry, the offensive line coach for USC, told me they just added this belly series here just a couple of weeks ago, meaning just give the ball to the fullback on a nice reverse pivot by the quarterback, and the fullback bellies to the line of scrimmage and looks for daylight. He found daylight to his left that time. 
There's Coach Barry. Awfully fine offensive line coach, especially in pass protection technique. Woods checks in and replaces Summons, who carried that ball. And this is Washington barging right straight ahead to the 32, and a penalty flag comes flying. Because when that Chris Reimer pulls around and up in the hole, he can bury you. He did that time. He had a pancake and a waffle at the same time on that one. No more penalties! Well, there's the Tuesday lineup on ABC. We'll have Roseanne, Life's Work, Home Improvement, Spin City, and uh, NYPD Blue. Holding. That's my favorite on show. On the offense, 10 yards and force from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. You know, if we said any one of the things on this broadcast tonight that they say on uh, NYPD Blue, we get fired. <laughs> oh, do they throw some things out at you? <laughs> that's, that's probably why I enjoy the show. <laughs> like, I love that coach talk, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a great show. It really is. Second down and 16 for the Let's Trojans. Toffler firing. Got him on the near sideline. Miller finally is out of bounds. He's the receiver. The ball is going to be marked at the 23-yard line. See, they had the wide receiver in close to the formation. And when you're in close to the formation like that, that gives you a lot of field to work to, and that's exactly what he did. Tight formation, work to the sideline, excellent throw. They blitz. He's a one-on-one -on -one situation all the way, and Miller beat him. For 23 yards, Covington, the cover man. John with a few words for his wide receiver. And Koffler brings him up with Sauer, the freshman, off to his right this time. And Bastianelli off to his left, and the fullback bangs to the 20-yard line. See, with those fast flow linebackers, the quarterback reverse pivots, fakes the toss, the tailback's like going like he's going to get the eye toss, and they slip it to him, and that's why they get those three and four and five yards in there. So an injured Trojan following the carry by LaVale Woods. Woods and Rodney Sermons alternating at fullback, and one of the Trojan linemen is now with, again, John Robinson jogging back onto the field. You know, in the visit we had with him, it's remarkable, his attitude, with the pressure that he's been under and all the things said about him. He has uh, made great composure. Here we are. That's my... Maelo, number 75, getting locked up in there. That's the true freshman, Maelo. Yeah, he's receiving attention. You know, it's interesting you're talking to, to John because uh, John has a good sense of humor, and he's, he's a realist, and he, he admitted that the team had not played up to expectations. He said, we've screwed up, but we're going to survive the criticism because he, he thinks that some of it takes on a life of its own doesn't think that he has to win tonight. I, I asked him, John, do you have to win to save your job? And the coach said no. He said, and then he laughed. He said, of course, if we lose this 100 to 6, they won't fire me. They'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought John Robinson was immune to the kind of criticism he's got here. I mean, he, you talk about a Trojan. He was here, you know, as an assistant. He, you know, he's done a, a remarkable job. Three bowl games, a Rose Bowl win. Nobody is immune if he isn't. That's life in the big arena, Coach. Yeah, I guess so. An interesting column on that in the Los Angeles Times today. I know you enjoyed that. Yeah, I really did. Suck it down at eight. Oh, oh and almost intercepted he by should have. 15, Alan Rossum. He should have intercepted. He batted it down. That's how I saw it. You know, defenders so many times get used in passing drills to knocking balls down. Right in the middle of your screen, you'll see Rossum. It's a little quick pass. He charges. Here he comes right there. Look at him. He batted the ball down. He could have picked it. I can't believe that. He had palms down and batted it to the ground. He blew it. You know, he's picked off, too, this year, returning for touchdown. So it'll be third down and eight for the Trojans. Sermons goes in motion out of the backfield. Toppler fires to the open man at the 10, and that is a first down, a well-designed pattern, and that freed Sauer, the freshman, to get open as they slipped Sermons quickly into the pattern and occupied the corner on that side. Right, see, now there's motion right there. That's Sermon coming out. That stretches the defense. Sauer comes in back inside. You saw the defender move with the receiver moving inside out. That opened the zone back up inside. It was a good throw, good rhythm, and there's Sauer to make the play. 
good design. That was the fullback in motion coming out there, bro. And coach, it'll be first down at the Irish 11 yard line. Coaches trail it by a point on the drive. Washington, alley left side to the five yard line. Second down to SC. Good blocking that time by the guard, and then good blocking by the fullback. This is an interesting execution play. It's a counter gap play without including the tackle. I'll show you what I'm talking about. The guard will pull and kick out. Instead of the tackle, it'll be the running back that does the other block on the point of attack. The guard will pull. He gets his kick. Here comes Sermon, number five. He gets his block, and they move the ball. Two tight ends in this second down for the five. The toss to Washington. No further than the three-and-a-half-yard line and met with that great Irish force on that side. You can see when a running back hits one of the Notre Dame linebackers or defensive they linemen, go, they, go, they go back the other oh, way. Boy, they do go they down tackle. in a hurry, don't Fundamentally, they? Fundamentally, extremely well, well coached. You know, they bend their knees, they strike with their shoulder pads, they run through their tackles. Plus, they never have to do it by Ball themselves. There's three the or four white jerseys with gold helmets on making the play at the same time. Here comes the third down for the Trojans. Coughler to throw for it. Intercepted in the end zone by Notre Dame. First down on the 20-yard line. He threw into coverage that time. Dilts the tight end was the intended receiver, and Gilbo, the strong safety, made the pick. That was a biggie. You never want to throw a touchdown in the goal of intercepts in the goal line area. You're thinking if I throw it away, otherwise I get the field goal. Holy mackerel. Good, good defense, though. See, they used a three-man pattern to the one side of the formation, and they covered it with real good discipline. Good pressure up. He has time to throw it. Take a look at the pattern. To the left-hand side of your screen, here's Gilbo right up inside to take the play away. Awfully good job of playing defense. You better all the way. Jeff Dilts couldn't make it. Hollis and the Irish with Denson Carey marching ahead for four yards, and it'll be second and six. If you're going to turn it over, you might as well turn it over down there. That you got 80 yards to go. But uh, now what's critical is for the SC defense to step up and slow them down. Don't allow that big momentum switch right there to affect you mentally. Time ticking away here in the first half. 103. At halftime, we'll be hearing from John Saunders on Florida State's big win down in Tallahassee. Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles hang on against Florida to win that battle of one versus two. And here are the Trojans. That Denson after a gain of about a yard, and that was Cusano, the linebacker, who's been active in there on that stop. I feel the Trojan defense has stiffened up here in the second quarter. They've been a little more firm at the point of attack. People getting after people. Well, Dick, so far they have not been terrified by the Notre Dame passing game. No, no. Well, not many people are. You know, they, they, you know, they don't come here to beat you throwing the ball. They come here to beat you physically. And Lou said, we're making a commitment to run the football tonight. But what is different about that? Farmer, the tailback. And Hollis uses a timeout. So speaking of John Saunders and uh, Tallahassee, let's go down to him now. John, that was a huge game this afternoon. Brand alongside Todd Blackledge and coming up on halftime of Valvoline 1996. This was a game number one against number two. It lived up to the hype. Yeah, it certainly did. And I'll tell you what, this was in-your-face football at the very <laughs> best. And this play right here describes the kind of game that we had today. It certainly does. These guys went after each other time and time again. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights of that game. Todd will break down exactly what happened. We'll also have the scores and highlights from other games played today. But number one against number two, that's why we're still here in Tallahassee right now. Back to Brent and Dick. Quite a game, wasn't it? Hey, John, that picture gives new meaning to put a hat on a hat, partner. Let me tell you that. Whenever a coach says that from now on, they just get that videotape. Out. I have never seen that before. <laughs> never. A wonderful picture, isn't it? Well, we'll be here from John and Todd down there. 12 seconds to go here. It's a 7 6 tight one. One Notre time out left. Leading by a point. Brad Otten started the game, went down early, re injured the ribs. They'll reassess his situation in the second half. Koffler came in through a huge interception down in the end zone moments ago. 12, 12 seconds. 
Quincy Woods tried it at quarterback for John Robinson. So the Trojans have used three quarterbacks here tonight, and they've been unable to generate any touchdowns. They had two early field goals, which put Robinson and USC ahead. And Ron Paulus led the Irish on a scoring drive, and Jamie Spencer, the fullback, stepped into the end zone for a lone touchdown. Defensive battle in the Coliseum so far. And this is Farmer. Farmer to the 41 yard line with the final seconds ticking down to six and the timeout will be used. I remind you again about championship Saturday here on ABC coming up. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship from St. Louis. Dick, you and I will be in there, and I think that's going to be a better game than a lot of folks might expect. I think Texas is going to come to play an improving team, and they will be there against Nebraska for the Big 12 championship. Then it's out to Las Vegas. BYU trying to impress the Alliance Bulls, saying, hey, don't forget about us. We're moving up in the rankings. But they got a deal with a very high-scoring Wyoming team in Las Vegas. And then at night, the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Will the Florida Gators be hanging their heads, or will they come back strong against Alabama? My guess is they'll come back strong. Those youngsters usually do. Dick, uh, you were thinking about something as we look at the lovely Olympic torch here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles about next Saturday's Nebraska Texas. Well I tell you John McAvin is an awfully good football coach and sometimes I think he can take a football team that's not quite as physical as an opponent's uh, football team and finesse you a little bit and put points on the board and he does an awfully good job adjusting during the ball game. His passing attack will give him some problems but that Nebraska defense is the best oh. in the country. Oh. It is absolutely unbelievable. Well, that Seminole bunch not too bad either, Coach. Down yeah, they're like not that. bad either. That's I kind of right. like the defensive one. Yeah. I wouldn't want Bullwire and Wilson coming after my quarterback. I gotta tell you that. It's a first and ten. Hollis brings Farmer off the wing, and he steps out of bounds at the 47-yard line, close to midfield. Two seconds. Last play is coming up, and uh, certainly we can remind you about our Chevrolet players of the game. We'll select a player from each side. And today, Chevrolet has awarded $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. <laughs> Lou uh, electing to run the clock out with the running game. If the reverse were true, if John Robinson were doing that right now, they would boo his fanny so loud we couldn't, they, you know, <laughs> we couldn't even hear, talk above the noise. You know, that's how it is out here when you do situations because I've been down on that field and done it and I've heard the booze. <laughs> Last snap the first half. Bootleg pass. Yes sir. Paulus got an open man a fullback Spencer incomplete and that'll do it. One touchdown here in the first half and it was put on the board by the Irish. Notre Dame leads USC 7-6. We'll be back for the second half right now. Let's send you down to John Saunders and Todd Blackley. John, take it away. Of Southern California by a point seven six. Only one touchdown. It was scored by the Irish. They used the fullback off the right tackle. And after the extra point, they had overcome a two field goal lead by the Trojans. But the biggest play of the game, Dick, probably came at the other end with the Trojans driving for an apparent touchdown. Well, the inexperienced quarterback in there didn't start the football game. Ott now tries to force one in down there where we would have been much better off just thrown out of the back of the end zone. Now watch another angle. Check for number five. Sermon's the fullback. Out he the slips right out. He is open, but the quarterback is screened. Number 13 size. They don't see the open receiver there, and it falls incomplete. So, Dick, Let's, you know, this is unbelievable. The Trojans have had 32 plays, 24 of those snaps in Notre Dame territory. Now, what would you do? What would Dick Vermeil do to overcome that and get the Trojans on the scoreboard with touchdowns? Well, Brent, I would make a commitment to one running back and say, go win the football game for me. Because we're not going to do it, let him three or four different guys. That's how I think. So USC will kick it off here to start the second half, trailing the Irish by a point. Blossom back in the game. Fields it at the two-yard line. Running, oh, and he's got an alley. Look out. It's tripped up and down at the 29-yard line. Jack Aru, what did John Robinson have to say, and what's going to happen with that quarterback position? Well, Brent, John Robinson's very happy with the performance of his team, but he reminded me, he says, look, if we play good 30 minutes, and the way we play for 30 minutes, we should be national champions. He is worried about the second half and maintaining that enthusiasm. 
Meanwhile, in the case of Brad Otten, the doctors have said he's still kind of iffy. I asked John Robinson about it. He said he's not going to play. But when you watch Brad, he was out trying to throw the pass. In fact, he came out in the tunnel during halftime without his pads and showed that he had the movement. So maybe the coach doesn't want him to play. One of the few quarterbacks we've ever seen put his helmet on if he's not going to play. All right, first and ten for Paulus and the Irish. This is a big money game for Notre Dame. Denson with 88 yards in the first half, and he gains two. And speaking of the numbers, let's take a look at how they shape up after the first half. Coach? Well, in contrast to the first quarter, USC picked up a little bit in the rushing game. Remember, they only had five. Here they have 48. Passing yards, neither team really throwing the ball very well. Total yards almost balanced. Plays equal, as you said, though, 32 offensive plays for USC, 24 of them on Notre, in Notre Dame territory. they got to get something now out of that. Spencer is the fullback for the Irish. Two wideouts in this set. The toss to Denson behind Spencer. And the Trojans are ready over here on the left side of the defense. And that was Sammy Knight is there with Willie Lowry. Willie Lowry did a beautiful job of getting pressured, knocking the, the blocker back into the offensive backfield, and then allowing Sammy Knight to come up and make the play. Awfully good play that time by Willie Lowry. The Irish have not thrown the ball well. Are you surprised? They, they, have, they have the ability to throw the, better, the ball better than the throwing it right now. They're down at nine. They want to slot off to the left. This is a passing formation for the Irish. Four down linemen for USC. Hollis looks to the left side and there fires. And finally the tight end was the intended receiver, but it falls incomplete. Just a little bit low, you know, and he hasn't thrown the ball many times in the first half, see? And he comes out here, and I don't think he's going to be real sharp when you don't throw the ball very often. Just throw in the critical situation, try to get the completed pass. Should have caught that football. But Previch has caught the ball like that. You've got to take your pass down to the ball, get way down there, even if you're six foot five. Both hunters hunted the ball superbly, averaging better than 47 yards in the first half of this game. Gets this one off. Parker is the return man for the Trojans. They drive him back to the 16-yard line. Sprints to the right sideline. Tries to get the corner. Larry and he's Parker down at the 32-yard line. line. So that will be SC's first starting position. And here he comes. Brad Otten, number 10. Well, or from the crowd, he's going to try it again. They better pass protect him. See, they have a different left tackle in there right now, too. They have Rome Douglas, who has been the starter back at left tackle. Look at what the defense has done. They've knocked the heck out of their hits, knockdowns, pressures too many times. They better play better here. Washington gets the call and tailback, and he steps to the 35-yard line. That's the three-yard gain. It'll be second and seven. Burt Berry with the stop. You know, one time I was talking to John Wooden about playing more than one running back and trying to keep... I got three good players in the same position, try to keep them all happy. You know what he said to me? Only keep one happy. Just find out who is the best and let him play. Otherwise, none of them will be happy. You know, I, I lived by that principle for long years, for many years. Right on. Jacket on underneath his SC jersey coach, bringing the Trojans up. Second down on seven, run the toss play. Washington's cut off, and he lost a yard on the play. Good defensive penetration that time by Notre Dame. Barry was there with Melvin Dansby, number 51. Melvin Dansby is a, not a dominating player. He's a consistent player, but you can see the defense has been playing real well. A number of three plays and out. The one nice drive, they go down there and turn it over where they should have come out with at least three points. Give the credit to Bob Davey and his defensive football team. They're very solid. They have done an excellent job in this game. No question about it. Turnover down in the end zone. They cleaned Let's up the line. Inside. They come on a blitz against Otten. He fires to Washington. Washington slipping, and he is down at the 37-yard line. But the blitz pressure. Cobbins was coming, and Maiden makes the stop on the receiver, and the Trojans are forced to punt. Boy, that's a hard blitz to pick up, too, when they cross the two inside linebackers like that. Now, granted, on screen passes, you allow more penetration to get them up, but you don't want to just turn them loose. <laughs> like they're lined up to pressure. One of the great punters, and they'll set the return. Denson. 
Makes the fair catch at the 16-yard line. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll see what Notre Dame can do with the ball, leading by a point, 7-6. Bought it, but Notre Dame nine for 17 yards. Denson has rushed for 88 yards. Hollis brings them up. The touchdown maker so far has been Spencer, the fullback. Number 33, he is directly behind Hollis. Slot formation over to the right. Kovic, the tight end, is on the left side, the strong side of the formation, and they are Denson, and he'll go down in the heat, and that was number 91, Lowry, making the stop. So Lou Holtz coaching his last regular season game. And he told us last night that the Irish must win this game to get to a bowl game. And Holtz also told us that he will stay as head coach. He will not turn Notre Dame over to Bob Davey for the bowl game. As you know, some coaches step away so they can put their staffs together and make their decisions and go off recruiting. But Holtz said that's not going to happen. He's got no place to go. He said, I got no job. What am I going to do? So now Palace, the Irish, second down and 11. And Spencer barges to the 19-yard line. Lowry again, very active defensively. Oh, I know it. He's been playing well the entire ball game. Initially, though, in the first quarter, he got whipped a couple times, but he has come on strong, getting in the rhythm of the ball game. 6'5", 255. He's a senior, from Moreno Valley, Valley View High School, playing well. And he's playing on a real good tight end a lot of times on the Brothers. Well, Kroklovich coach is over on his side right now, but it's third and eight. Let's see if Kroklovich could battle his way out as a pass receiver. He start motion. That's Mosley for Notre Dame coming down toward the quarterback. He takes a deep drop, waits on the cross, and he has got his leading receiver. And that is the first reception of the game for Malcolm Johnson, the junior from Washington, D.C. They run the crossing pattern right here. He came in motion, and they're going to come across with both receivers. It takes a little time, but he got good protection. This is from the blimp. Boy, that's a great view. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Coach, I got to tell you something. Only a coach would love that. Okay. Oh, hey, that's mean? all 90,000. Yeah. He could move. I, he, you know, my, he's been waiting seven years with me to see all 90,000. It's wonderful what you can do with that. And I want to use a telestrator. <laughs> <laughs> Let me play with the toys I have up here. I love it. You're great. ABC, ABC spends a lot of money on this equipment. <laughs> First down on that catch. Uh, we got the blimp's eye view from up above. And John Robinson, the Trojans, attempting to come back here. Trailing by a point. They led it 6 0, in case you just joined us. Two early field goals. And the Trojans threatened, but they had a pass intercepted in the end zone by Gilbo of the Irish working on that corner. First and 10 now for Paulus and Notre Dame. Malcolm Johnson goes out to the left, and Mosley's the slot man. So Blitz coming. They blitz the run. Denson gets away from Knight. And keeps going. He slipped out of his hands to the 33. Do you think the blimp could tighten up and ever look well, at this? Hey, this is a great shot. Now we have some man blocking coming off here. We had a blitz coming from the top of your screen. You'll see Sammy Knight, number nine, come in there, but he runs right through it. That's a great shot. <laughs> I'm pumped. I, I can tell. Thank you, Goodyear. Second <laughs> down. Now for Paulus and go to bed. Knight has moved over to the left side, and he is showing coming, but he waited for the fullback on that side, in on the stop. But even then, Spencer moved that pile. I mean, he was powering He didn't there. move it. I'll tell you who moved it was Chris Clevenger and Jeremy Akers over the left guard, left tackle. They knocked some people off the ball. You have to keep your pads down against these guys. Joe Moore teaches. You watch these people right here coming off the ball. Joe Moore teaches the lineman to stay a little bit lower than we see people nowadays. A lot of people like to stand up and ooze block. Not old Coach Moore. He keeps those pads down and comes off low and bends those knees. Good movement. First down and 10 for the Irish. They have come out to their 38-yard line. Slot to the right is Mosley. The hand is to Spencer. Spencer. Which powers and turns to the 42-yard line. That's a strong four-yard game. Lou Holtz is working over those inside tackle positions right now. That time he changed up instead of man blocking and he tried to trap block him. He's hitting him from all angles. He said to us also, he said, 
Were you always going to media Lou, when you get done with Notre Dame? He said, you kid, I got a perfect face for radio and a perfect list for television. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wonderful man. <laughs> he really is. What a sense of humor. Second down. Hollis keeps it. And nothing doing on that play. So it'll be about to third down of four, Coach. That was an option play. Coach Holtz told me the other day a story about Polish yelling over, option, option, Coach. So he said, yeah, run 18. Polish shook his head. No, no. He said, run 19 options. He said, no, no. He goes back in the huddle, calls. He calls it X option for a touchdown. He wanted to throw the option pass. <laughs> that was Cusano again making the stop. He's been an active linebacker for the Trojans. So here comes the third down play with that slot off to the left. Denson is over here on the wing looking in at Collis from the right side. This time he goes out into the pattern. And they drop to the middle, Spencer. First down, Notre Dame. A little check down, expecting zone. Very, very good change up call. You know, high percentage throw. You allow the rush to get there. You notice how deeply he dropped. Lou likes that one. You'll see this. Now he's going to drop deep to get the rushers upfield and then check the running back down. He's going to let the rush get there. Spencer sits. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Check down. There he goes. Well done. See the zones backed off there. Papadakis replaces Cassano here on first and 10 for Southern Cal as one of their linebackers. Spencer. And he burrows straight ahead for about three yards. You know, this kind of line blocking, when they come off like that low and hard and work their feet and they all weigh about 300, that wears down a defensive line because it takes a lot of energy each snap from a defensive standpoint to absorb that. That can wear you out in the fourth quarter. It'll be second and seven for the Irish. Notre Dame leads it by a point. They have moved into Southern Cal territory now at the 47-yard line. Lovich is to the right side of the formation. Still a slot to the left. Denson, and he is tripped up. Makes his way short of the 45-yard line. So, uh, Jack Aroot, Denson has been a pretty good running back in South Bend. Yeah, but Brent, he was recruited, and he came in, and they said, no, you're not going to play running back. You're going to play a safety. And he went to Lou Holtz, and he says, Coach, I really want to play running back. I thought about it. I prayed about it. And you know what, Coach? I'm a Warwick Dunn, and you really can use a Warwick Dunn. Why? Because Warwick... Well, we'll get back to you on the rest of that story. <laughs> he got kidnapped. <laughs> Third and five. I was all engrossed. Hollis fires, and hold on the whistle. Would not have been an interception. This crowd would have exploded. Hello. Hello. I think I'm still frozen from yesterday, Brent. <laughs> so he went to coach, and he says, I'm a Warwick Dunn. You need a Warwick Dunn. And why? Well, because Warwick Dunn is Audrey Denson's hero. Kind of... Not really the way I wanted that story to end. <laughs> <laughs> thaw out, Jack. Uh, thaw out. <laughs> well, we got a timeout. We'll take a break. Speaking of Warwick Dunn, what a marvelous game he played in Tallahassee today for Bobby Bowden. Timeout. We're brought to you by M. Norelco Reflex Action Razor. Anything closer could be too close for comfort. High above the Los Angeles Coliseum on this gorgeous evening, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle has been providing these aerial pictures. Goodyear Blimps travel over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events. Nice to have you along with us here tonight. Third down, tough defensive game unfolding here between these two old rivals. The Irish need five yards, must get to the 40-yard line, and that won't do it. So it's boot punt time. Coming up for Notre Dame, they will try to bury USC back there. The Trojans have been struggling at the quarterback position tonight. Obviously, Lou doesn't want to turn the ball over, take any chances by running that kind of a trap play. I watched Lou Holtz practice and run his practice on Tuesday in the practice field, and he yells and screams and chews. He coaches every second he's on the field. He really gets after him. He hasn't backed off at all just because he's resigned. Hunter Smith will be punting it to Parker and Cook who are back deep for the Trojans. Parker, fair catch. 13-yard line, and uh, that's where the Trojans will put it in play. When we come back, Notre Dame leads by a point, 7-6 in Los Angeles. I'm hoping to pick up an invitation for $8 million to an Alliance Bowl, not far from here in the desert. 
the Skins game. They're playing for some big bucks in that one. I don't know if you saw this earlier today. Freddie Couples at the par three, third hole. Give me the cash. Then it was the veteran, Tom Watson at the eighth. Oh, yes. The old line and the final nine holes tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern. Here, Otten still in a quarterback. Play action fake going down the middle. Got an open hands drop. Oh. Soward was right there, and it would have been six for well, the Trojans. Devron Harper was right there as well. The young freshman, a freshman covering a freshman. From our side, looking at it, it looked like it was a caught football. It looked like a reception. A one-on-one -on -one situation. Here they go. He gives him a little, should have given him a little more of a stick right there to the outside. Harper covering him all the way. Goes up for the ball. Should have made the catch. He dropped it. He just dropped it. Second down and 10. Otten throwing very well deep that time on first down. Irie back aligned out there out after walking up into the gap. But it did cause Otten to change the play call. Looking left, going to go down. And that's Ronaldo Wynn who has sacked him at the two-yard line. Boy, what a good football player. He got his degree last May in sociology. Now he's getting a degree in pass rush. Coming low, number 48. He gets inside. He uses his hands real well and throws the pa pass protector. That was big number Rome Douglas. And Rome Douglas is 6'7", 300, and he just threw him with his hands. Awfully strong, good weight program there run by Kirk Woolfork. Bob Davey has to be pleased with Ronaldo's play defensively. Davey, of course, next year will replace Lou Holtz as head coach at Notre Dame. Third down and 18 after the eight-yard loss on the sack. And the Trojans will take a timeout. Boy, when you can rush the passer, when you can rush the passer with people like that, you can shut somebody down. We'll go over to the sideline and talk it over with the coaches. We'll be right back. So instead, let's let's just hold it right here during this timeout, Dick, on uh, third and 18, and it allow us to discuss Otten and the ribs and how he is restricted as a result of that injury, what they can or cannot do, what Davey might try to do defensively against the injured quarterback. Well, first off, I think Otten has confidence that he can throw the ball because the last time he was sacked, it was an audible. He saw the man coverage. He wanted to take advantage of it. They just didn't get pass protected properly. Now, I think Davey ought to think aggressively. He says, let's go knock his fanny out of the ballgame right now let's bring some inside linebackers do some cross charging stunning with our defensive linemen and get pressure on it and knock him down sack him. hey pressure him don't even sack him force him to throw the interception cotton bends back down in that huddle Got you. and it is third and 18. he has to realize where he is right now he don't want to get sacked in that end zone Woods is the tailback Otten from his own end zone and there's a penalty flag. Soward was juggling the ball over there on that side and the defender was Harper who had coverage but there was a penalty flag thrown as Soward started his pattern. The legal formation on the offense six man line. Boy they're their own worst enemy. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, we've talked about the flak jacket that Brad Otten there is wearing beneath his jersey. Let's see if we can take a look at it. It's kind of a unique device. What it does is protect you all the way around, but it didn't protect him sufficiently. So at halftime, underneath the flak jacket, they wrapped very tightly Otten's upper body. Now, I'm a little bit surprised, Coach, that it hasn't affected his throwing motion at all. No, it really hasn't. I mean, that, that the touchdown pass he threw that was dropped, <laughs> it wasn't a touchdown, but it was right on the money. The Irish set the return. That's a They're going to be drive. satisfied with the field position. Denson crosses midfield, 45, 40, looking for an alley, and penalty flies oh. flying from out of the stadium all over the place. It looked, like graffiti. It. <laughs> it looked like graffiti down here with all those flags. <laughs> My God. He had those low line drive punts. You need a hang time of about four or five. To allow your coverage people to get under there consistently. You'd like it more. And that punter, Ren, is capable of getting a 5 0 hang time, five seconds in the air. He didn't do it that time. The illegal block in the back is what all four of the flags are for. That's <laughs> the return team, 10 yards in fourth, spot of the foul. First down. I've never heard 
a referee say that before. That's well, that is Notre Dame's first penalty. You don't think they're not disciplined? You ought to go on the practice field. They don't make a mistake on the practice field either without getting belted around, or I mean yelled at anyway. Yeah, excuse me, please correct that. Not belted, but <laughs> he'll grab my face mask. He's done that during games. <laughs> first down and 10, but the penalty takes them back into Notre Dame territory, the other side of the 50 at the 46 yard line. So it's expensive for the Irish who lead, but only by a point. You just get the feeling watching the Irish and Southern Cal in this game that something crazy is going to happen before this was over. You just have a clue, but it's just kind of that sort of strange, weird evening here as Palace yeah, brings the Irish up to the line of scrimmage. Did they bring the leopard team? It's got to be somewhere sneaking around here. Denson. Cut back. 50 45 outside and Denson's going to be a century runner here tonight. So their leading runner is getting the job done again. Otfrey Denson averaging 101.9 yards a game and he has scored seven touchdowns for the Irish this year. Concentrate on big number 70. Ritter get a nice kick out block right there and open that hole. There was a good down block by Kreplevich inside there that collapsed it inside from the end zone. You'll see what I'm talking about. Follow the guard to the right side of your screen. Bang! Good timing. Good execution. Now on first down, the 38-yard line. Farmer in the game for his first carry of the second half, and he goes eight yards close to the 30-yard line. I'll tell you who did a nice job on that was Ritter pulling around the corner and they got after Russell a little bit too. You, you got to get people on Russell 96 right side of your screen. See they double him knock him off the ball. That allows room for Ritter to come around up in the hole number 70 and make that crease available there for number 31 Robert Farmer. And Farmer's a big guy at 227 pound running back. Second down and two. Spencer and Farmer the running backs behind Hollis. Spencer short of the first down. So this will be about third and one for Notre Dame. Lowry again, number 91. He has been active defensively. You know, Lou talking about next year and Coach Davey said that this could be a good football team next year. He starts 10 underclassmen of this year's Notre Dame team. He said if they come through at a couple of positions, it could be a great team. And he says he feels sorry that he's been unable to recruit the great wide receiver for Pollock. He feels that that's restricted their passing game somewhat. Nothing restricts the Notre Dame running game. And here's third and one. Spencer and Farmer are the running backs. It's Spencer. First down as he spun off the tackle. And that was the freshman linebacker, Claiborne from Riverside, who made the hit. So next Saturday, the Triple Dipper, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship from St. Louis, the improving Texas Longhorns against Nebraska, and then the WAC from Las Vegas. It's BYU against Wyoming. It'll be a shootout. And then the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, Florida, and Alabama. Gene Stallings announcing his retirement. I happen to be driving across the middle of nowhere when he announced that retirement last night. It was one of the most eloquent talks I have ever heard anybody deliver in retirement. Was what a gentleman, Gene Stallings. I saw it on television. And knowing Gene like I do, it didn't surprise me he could do such a great job. That's it. Smashed down at the 30 yard line and Sammy Knight in there again number nine and this time Denson is going to be very slow in getting back up. Mr. Knight he can flow so well he, he sees those cracks and he has the quickness to run behind a play behind the line of scrimmage and make the play onside. What a fine football player now he won't play outside in linebacker in the National Football League but he'll play somewhere. And with Denson apparently falling over here on the side the ball is underneath him as they drove him down and clearly that could have knocked the wind out of him Randy Kinder I believe is going to check in for his first play of the night Kinder running back out of East Lansing Michigan and uh, Denson with 107 yards for the night and now it is second down and 13 after the loss three wideouts off to the left the Irish need 13 yards from the Trojan 31-yard line. Farmer 
they won't get it. But they did get to the 25-yard line. He spreads you out to run inside. Nothing wrong with that philosophy. You're, you're apt to pop one right that way as, as if you had two tight ends in there. So this will be... Now, now he's forced into the obvious passing situation. Yeah, exactly. Need eight yards here. Mosley is in. Johnson is in. Mosley slotted to the right. Kriplevich, the tight end, is over to the left side. He's been relatively quiet so far. He gets off the line. Hollis looks to the middle. Knocked away from the tight end that time, and it was number 42, Brian Kelly out of Denver, making a big defensive play for the Trojans at the right time. I think the ball was thrown a little bit behind for Plevich. Left side of the screen, number 98, working up inside the zone. You'll see Kelly come flying in on that right there. It is just a little bit behind him. Good job, and he really, look at that dance. Look at that. I mean, maybe he took dance here at USC. Good football player. He's played corner and safety. Started nine games last year at corner. Been playing free safety this year. So they're going to go for it. From the Trojan 25-yard line, needing eight yards for a first down. They have to get inside the 17. Play fake. Got in. Hollis didn't throw it. Hollis in trouble. Throws off balance. Touchdown, Notre Dame. He hit. Champion. He had his tight end initially for a big play. Didn't see him. Held on to the ball a second too late, then scrambled around in the pocket under pressure and stayed with the discipline of the pattern and finds him downfield. He came into the ball game with a new touchdown record, career record with 42. That's his 43rd, right? Lou Holtz on fourth down tonight has gone three times and he's been successful all three occasions. None more important than this one. The touchdown pass, and it was thrown to champion, Sakia Champion from Tyler, Texas, with the Irish's second touchdown, and Jimmy Sanson for the extra point, and a little daylight now for the Irish. Penalty flag thrown in the end zone. That's really tough on a defensive secondary. When you get back there like that, uh, Brent, you know, and he's scrambling around. They think he's going to sack him. Everyone back there, and it takes a little time, and then all of a sudden, the receiver pops out of that coverage in for the end zone. You see that all the time. The legal participation, 12 players on the field by the defense. That penalty, 15 yards, will be enforced on the kickoff. It works sometimes. <laughs> Here's Sakia champion number 18, top of your screen. Working right there. That's Ken Haslip. He moves back. Now, see, he heads for the end zone in the scramble situation. Gives him a fair catch signal. <laughs> there he is. Good heads up play. And now coaches teach these kind of things. Here's the pressure. It's going to appear right now. He had the tight end to the top of the screen. You can't see it there. Very good avoid technique. And pop. He gets popped. He doesn't see it cut. Now you'll see what we're talking about right. A little play action. Nice protection initially. He doesn't throw it. He scrambles up inside. I thought he was going to run it. You know, you work on those things on practice fields from time to time, on scrambled broken plays, and there's rules by the receivers. The widest go deepest. The number two come underneath the deepest to the sideline. Number three come across the field and wave your hands. All those kind of things. It paid off in that drill right there. Lou liked that one. He said it wasn't a beautifully executed play, but the end result is the same. Well, an interesting decision here for Notre Dame because the penalty should allow them to kick this ball into the end zone and not allow Sauer a return. You want to keep it out of his hands right now, and the ball is going to be teed up at midfield with Hollis talking to the assistant coaches upstairs. Samson ready to kick it off. very deep in the end zone. Miller will take the knee and it will indeed come out on the 20 yard line. So that's where the 15 yarder hurts Southern Cal again. When you make fundamental mistakes like that, it's hard to get something going and Southern Cal has been its own worst enemy. They have been unable to score a touchdown here tonight going in in the first half. They threw an interception on third and three from the four yard line. 
They have only two field goals to show for all the snaps they had in Notre Dame territory in the first half. It's 14 six. You know sooner or later the misfortune they've had in the fourth quarter is going to come around and be good fortune for them. You just can't go a whole season with all the problems they have. Washington slipping left and now he turns it up. Notre Dame will give you a couple of yards. That was Tatum who closed up. But of all the defenses we have watched this year, they clean up the front, and unfortunately, that is Tatum who is down now and shaken up. But I will tell you that Notre Dame cleans up that front about as efficiently as anybody we have watched along the line. They, they do. don't penetrate like Florida State and Nebraska, but it seems to be just as tough to move the ball, and you have to look back on that Ohio State victory in South Bend as probably the Buckeyes finest showing of the year and the, the one that Notre Dame would least be able to explain when you watch this Notre Dame defense here today uh, you get the feeling that they should have been able to do much better against the Buckeyes but irregardless here they are and a big win tonight Bob Davies defense doing a job and they'll be able to move on to an Alliance Bowl you know I asked Bob Davies if he had any specific change up in his defense in regard to defense and USC run he said first off I'm not so sure how committed they are to running football but regardless he said I am going to just stay with our fundamental approach you know, and just play hard at the point not do anything fancy and take advantage of our, our growth the entire season of defense and the run is he going to change the offensive philosophy will he open it up and throw it more or will he stick to the running attack that Lou Holtz has used over the last decade well I, I you know I don't know I asked him about that kind of stuff I really did then I think you'll kind of open it up just a little bit but he didn't come right out and say that to me I think he's a little bit guarded about what he's going to say because you know he's got a lot of decisions to make himself between now and when he becomes the official head football coach now we've come to the end of the third quarter Notre Dame leading it 14 to 6 and we'll be back with the final 15 minutes between Notre Dame and USC after this message and a word from our ABC station. An ancient rivalry, Notre Dame and Southern Cal. 90,000 on hand in the Los Angeles Coliseum. The last regular season game as head coach of the Fighting Irish for Lou Holtz. And the Trojans on first down throw Sermons juggle. Still got it. Was able to catch it on the high juggle. Oh, baby, how about that? Going out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Well, that's a technique running back coach Charles White does not teach. I'll guarantee it. <laughs> Came out into the pattern as a receiver. Got the high juggle. White over there, the one-time Heisman Trophy winner here in Southern California, coaching the running backs. I recruited him to UCLA. I, I think I had his grandmother convinced, but I didn't convince him. Third down and four. Otten looking for a little time. Irish show blitz. Cleaned up. Throws just a little inside his receiver. That was Larry Parker, who had slipped out number 80, and it is incomplete. Dick, how did... I'll tell you this, the fact that Otten can come out and throw with confidence, and he missed that one by inches and everything, Brent, I, I think he, he's got some big plays left him for the fourth quarter. But SC has had terrible luck when they haven't been able to control the ball. And there they are on the fake. Fourth down, and they snapped it to the short man, Claridge. Big, big defensive play. I'm surprised they did it down there. We knew it was in the game plan, but you see they have everybody up here on the line of scrimmage. There aren't going to be many gaps in there unless they fall out. Now, one uh, punt return person fell out. They're snapping it to a linebacker that was a high school running back and a good one, but they didn't get it. Boy, that is critical. That's the chances you take, and if you don't do it at the, the time that's not conspicuous, you never make it. Well, now Notre Dame winds up with superb field position at the 29-yard line. And Palace adjusts his running backs. And that was Denson moving up to make sure he has returned after being shaken up. He takes a toss to the left, and he is pressed back to the inside by Kusana, who closes in on the stop. Uh, Dick, I want to go back on, on your point and just make sure you really think that on fourth and four, down one touchdown on a two extra point, oh, that's the position you no, would have gone for? No, not at all. 
I didn't say that. No, okay. I no, just thought you were not saying at that. all. <laughs> if, no, that, are you, no, not at all. Kind of I don't have guts enough. You kind of surprised kind of me goal. a little bit no. with that one. I see. Me. I think I'm only one play out of it. I don't want to try to make a big play in a very tough situation. No, no way. Let's see more like an act of desperation and Hollis off the fake. Still got it. Can't get the open man. Scrambles inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Close to a Notre Dame first down. Nice run by Hollis. You know, I, I, you know, I just not that much of a high risk guy. If they fake the reverse right here, and you hope to, in doing that, attract the safety's attention, watching the reverse, then get somebody in behind him. And good discipline in the secondary, they couldn't find anybody open. Well, third down and short. Farmer, a late addition, brings the play in, gets a check now with Hollis. He's already got something called here on third and short. Get a little tighter look on the formation. And Paulus just hands it off to Spencer, and Spencer earns the first down with Sammy Knight getting credit for being in on another tackle. With as good a punter as the Trojans have, you've got to be very satisfied, I would think, to play field position for the time being. I mean, we're early in the fourth quarter, 13 minutes. You give up a touchdown now, and it is really uphill in this football game. Uh, no question, especially when you play for three quarters. Well, even a field one. goal yeah. puts you in trouble. I mean, you are only a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying the game. So that play is going to be discussed and dissected at length, I dare say, especially <laughs> if the Irish can score some points off it. Inside the 18-yard line. This is Denson. Cuts back to the left side. Powers his way to the 14-yard line. It'll be second down and five. And now this relentless ground game. This offensive line that Dick Vermeil explained comes off low and hard. As you see Notre Dame right here, uh, it just controlling that third quarter. Look at the total domination. And SC, as we showed earlier in the graphic, has really struggled when the opponent controlled the clock because they haven't been able to make the big plays offensively and make up for giving up time. Second down and six. Paulus got Double on it. Snap. What a call for a blitz. Ball was the on back. the ground and a penalty flag. So you wonder, because Knight got it across so fast, was he offside? I don't think he was, but evidently somebody uh, thought he was, or they're calling. Let's see. Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator, got after him on that call. Hit him right where they're hurting. There's Keith. Dead ball, full start on the offense. After the play, dead ball, personal foul against the offense. Oh, 15 yards. That's dumb football. Oh, Holtz has got reason to be <laughs> furious at whoever was responsible for that penalty. <laughs> Look at Lou. Look at. I mean, that was a big break for the Trojans. Here's Sammy Knight, number nine, right in the middle of your screen. Now he's going to go up the center guard gap. They divide the tackles. He gets there cleanly. The ball's on the ground. They're lucky to get it back. Now, I don't see where the personal foul comes. So the personal foul against one of the Irish linemen. Second and 26. After the penalty is marched off, back to the 34-yard line. Paulus on a play fake. Goes deep, complete. The ball! The Trojans have got it at the one-yard line. Malcolm Johnson fumbles inside the five, and USC takes over. A good news for a Trojan fan. The bad news is they still got 99 yards to go against the Irish D. But what a good way to come out of a fake punt that didn't work. Sammy Knight made another huge play. Number nine is number one right now for the Trojans. 
With the all-new Dodge Dakota, we offer... You see Malcolm Johnson right there, number 80, coming off the ball. He's going to work across the field, inside the zone. They're going to throw it, hit him right on the money. And up from behind will come Sammy Knight right there and just strip the ball away. Excellent. He didn't try to make the tackle. Number nine, look at right there. He just ripped it out of his hand. I don't know who you fault. It's tough to yell at the receiver. Great play by Sammy Knight. It was indeed. Knight giving the Trojans the ball, coming out for the one-yard line. Walters, the tailback. Servants is the fullback. The injured Otten stays in at quarterback. They're going to throw out of their own end zone. Fires left side. Got a man wide open. Bastinelli out to the 33-yard line. The same play they struck gold with earlier this year against Illinois in Champaign. Only that baby went for 97 yards. Here they are. It's a nice play action. It took a little time now. They're playing a zone. The corner rolled up. The safety's got to get over there. He doesn't get there. He got turned. He gets upfield. Does a real nice job. That's a Johnny Saunders recovering to make the play. Very good call by Mike Riley. 33-yard gain for the Trojans. Out from the 34. Otter getting time again. Middle. Miller interference. No question. 15 yards and another first down. Allen Rossum was hanging on to Miller, and Miller had a step. You know, when Alan Watson has a step, he can fly. One-on-one -on -one situation, he gives him a little move to the outside, gets back underneath, the ball is thrown, and Otten is really humming that football. Really humming it. Boy, and he's on top of him right there. Mike Riley, offensive coordinator, evidently John Robinson said, hey, let's go after them deep. Let's throw the football. about it coming out from your one yard line and here you are sitting first down on the 49 yard line 51 yards to go for a score mike riley's got to be breathing a little fresh air right now there he is in the middle of the screen one of the fine young football coaches in college football i got to know this guy brent when we were doing the, remember the old world league he was coaching san antonio did a great job never forget that first and 10 for the trojans i'm gonna throw it again Receiver's cover takes off to the right on the flat jacket and all. Now he throws incomplete. The tight end was his intended receiver, John Allred. Otten should throw the ball away and not take a hit. Don't hang on to it. They need him all through the fourth quarter. Don't try to win it on one play. If he gets hit again squarely and firmly, he may not be in there. And he's humming that ball right now. See, this team can put pressure on you. And those kind of play actions, you get back deep, see you coming around from behind him. He's avoiding people. Throw it away. Throw it away before you get hit. Now, second down and 10 for the Trojans. The ball on their own 49-yard line. Walters, nothing doing. Win hitting first. Does he hit you? Does he? He's going to make a heck of a lawyer. You know that? You know, he's used to sticking people. You know, he can really <laughs> get it out there. Make a divorce attorney, huh, Coach? Yeah, he would. <laughs> Man, I love the way he plays football. Third down and seven. And we'll see what Otten's got. Chris Miller, number two. His veterans. Boscinelli stays in, number 25. He's off to the left. All at the tight end on the right side of the formation. Blitz. And Sermon slips out. Fire it. It had a first down. Beautiful throw. Can't throw it any better. Right on the money. They blitzed. There was no inside safety help. Bastinelli comes across the middle. Here he is as a sophomore. He's never going to fit there. Here he comes. Top. Now watch him break to the inside. Gave him a good stick right there. Right in the bread basket. Woo. Coaching's easy. There's nothing to it. <laughs> Bet you he punts this time, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner or later, bad fortune, if you coach long enough, will come around and be good fortune. That's all there is to it. He's had so many things go wrong for him in the fourth quarter this year. Two double over overtime losses. 
right between his hands. He didn't get those hands and draw the ball to his body. The cover man, Bullshit, pounces on the ball. That's the second time he's gotten downfield on one, and you have to wonder now about Rossum's injury earlier in the game. So here help. comes our stand, and this could well decide this, baby. Still a lot of time, 10.22 to go. The Trojans have not scored a touchdown. Sermons is in front of Walters. Double tight end look for the Trojans now, and they'll run the toss to the short side. Walters kicks up, passes the 10, slams inside the five-yard line. Beautiful run that time by the senior from Arlington, Texas. And a beautiful block by Chris Reimer, the offensive left guard. He's wheeling around there on the left side, waiting up there, knocked the man back, and they cut up right behind his great big rear end. You'll see him pull him out of the left side there. What a nice job. Left guard position. Here he goes. Pow! He knocked him out of there. Now up inside there. Good job. Second down and two for the Trojans. Walters again short of the first down as the Irish meet the challenge with Bobby Howard and Kenan Tatum in on that stop. And right now they're thinking two downs for the first down. This will be third down and two. It's a huge moment against Bob Davies' defense for the Trojans. He says, go second. He thinks they're going to throw it. You can read his lips over there on the sideline. Let's see if Otten indeed puts it up. They're going to toss the Walters, cut off, cuts back, slam short of the first down. What did Lou Holtz tell us last night? He says it's going to be goal line defense. He said, we've beaten these people before when they couldn't score on us inside the five-yard line. He said, if it gets down that again, we can stop them. They toss the ball deep. They're trying to run the eye toss. He gets turned back up inside. Look at the white jerseys. They have confidence they can play in the goal line against the Trojans because they've done it before. John Robinson going all out. Nothing to lose. No field goal, even though a field goal could close them to within five. So they wait too long to throw the ball. From the five-yard line on fourth down, Ott looks for a receiver, snaps it to the end zone, and Miller... He's strutting. We haven't seen any signals yet. Now the officials are looking at each other. Finally, finally a call. Holy mackerel. What's the delay for, guys? Now Davey can't believe it. Is this, could this be another That's a phantom problem. touchdown? Here it is, this little bunt formation. They have three receivers real close. He's coming inside right now, underneath it, like a little rub-off move in there. There, Miller goes down for the ball. He's in the end zone. At least his rear end was. The only question is whether or not the point of the ball was off the ground as he fell back into the end zone. There is no other question. Clearly, he had the ball as long as he caught it clean. Here now for the tie. Hot. Can't run, throws back high. Bastianelli knocked away in the end zone, and the Irish hang on to the lead. 14-12. Gilbo, who intercepted one in the end zone, knocks this away. This is the touchdown. From the right side of your screen, comes underneath two other receivers. Yeah, he's in there. But after scoring six, they miss by two, and that's the difference right now. Came on fourth and eight, now the Trojans come back with a touchdown on fourth and five. They missed the two-point conversion for the tie. It's a 14-12 wide open game with 8.21 to go, and Farmer is back deep for the Irish. Out of bounds coming out on the 35. We have seen strange things. Now, we want to show you this again from the end zone, and we will try to freeze it on down to watch Chris Miller just to make sure that the point of the ball does not touch the ground as he goes down. Otten snaps it in low, makes the catch right there. He's got it. Now watch as he goes down, cradles it right there all the way. It was a touchdown. Now, the side judge and the back judge did not see it. They stood there looking at each other. Finally, it was the referee who came up behind the play and at about the line of scrimmage, finally put his hands in the air, and Chris Miller had the touchdown that has given us a ball game here for the last 8-21.
Paulus now on the snap, hands off. Denson cuts into the middle and smashes his way close to midfield. Lou Holtz loves that football play. Loves to put a slot into the field and then run right toward the slot because your defense loosens to move out there and get in a position to help on pass coverage on the slot. Well, I, you know, against these guys, you might tighten up over there because they really like to run that slant draw or sprint draw, whatever you want to call it. Farmer and Spencer are the Irish running backs. Four down linemen for the Trojans. Russell has been well blocked tonight by the Irish, and they got him that time again beautifully. The one they cannot account for in there, though, is the middle linebacker. And number 55, the freshman, Chris Claiborne, made the stop. But I want to tell you, the blocking job being done on Russell is as good as he's seen all season. Right. Well, they're going after him right there. Now, Ritter, number 70, just pending. That's a pancake, a waffle with a little syrup on it right there. But what they tried to do, Notre Dame tried to get him to take the fullback in the opposite direction. They didn't do it. Big D might not want to listen to some of those agents that are trying to coax him out next year. He might want to stay and work on that technique a little bit in college. Second down and nine. Hollis now studies the defense. Denson breaks free, crosses the 40 to the 34-yard line. First down, it's Autry Denson. You know, when you can pull linemen, block down for people in the gap, and pull lethal around, you'll see right here, he's going to pull around in there. Here he goes, coming around, pow, up inside there, and that was really a nice job by Jeremy Akers. The Irish offensive line taking charge right now as Notre Dame drives down to the 35-yard line. They have dominated the running game behind this talented, large offensive line. Knight tries to get inside on Denson, and this time Russell is over there. No gain on the play as 96 gets over and helps out on the stop. comes on down to 630. That's one of the things that the running game does in a situation like this where you lead by two. John Robinson, of course, was not happy with his field goal situation last week against UCLA. He's standing over there hoping it doesn't come down to that again. He'd like to get the ball back and drive at the length of the field. Lou Holtz has got other ideas. He wants to pound it in behind this offensive line. Second down and nine for Paulus and the Irish. They show blitz. Here comes Knight again. They run into it. Nothing doing. The blitz was a good call against that running play. And now it's third and nine. And the Irish are almost forced to put one up. And the big fella, Russell, stepped up and took on the challenge. They say, you're going to knock me in my back one time, but you're not going to do it the next time. He came off his block that time, and off he made the play. Right in the middle of your screen, you'll see 96 close down, and then work back inside out. Here he comes, makes the play. But the extra help of those linebackers coming up inside make it really tough to run in there. Three wide receivers are off the Paulus's right. The tight end is down to the left. One running back. Paulus into the formation. Fires complete. He got his slot man that time, Mosley, at the 22-yard line. And it's first down, Notre Dame. See, they blitz people. They handle the blitz this time. With your one-on-one -on -one out there in that blitz situation, a nice throw. you got three receivers out there. They're all isolated one-on-one. -on -one. You see Mosley just step in there. And McCutcheon playing a little bit back off there, respecting the, the Mosley speed. Clock comes down to 5.23 now, and Paulus brings the Irish up at the 22-yard line. Johnson checks in. He's off to the left. They split the two wideouts, and they show two tight ends and change the look of the formation. Denson's the lone running back. Denson gets the call. Gets away from Clarys, but not the big fella that time was Willie Lowry, number 91. You know, I watched on the practice field Tuesday when they get in that two tight end formation and one back. He has an audible option that he likes to run. And you can't tackle these people up high. There's Clarence, number 55, a true freshman. See, they'll run out of those kind of tackles. you got to get your body across in front of a ball carrier like Autry Denson. That's why he's rushed for over 1,000 yards. He can make people miss, but this guy is going to be a great, great Trojan linebacker. So Claiborne doing just another great job in there on second down at nine. See, they're jumping the defense around now, trying to stop them. They run the toss play. It's Denson looking daylight. Got it to the nine-yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame on the Denson run. You know, the Trojans go to the pass to try to catch up. 
Lou Holtz goes to the run. You can't criticize him for that. They toss the ball deep. They pull the lineman right there. They down block with a tight end. They get the tackle kick out block right there. And just good, strong running up inside. Awfully nice job by Chris Cleavager, the left tackle, who pulled and kicked out. It is first and goal from the 10-yard line. And they stay with the two tight end look. One wide out, the fullback's back. Denson running daylight touchdown Notre Dame he broke the plane of the goal before the ball was fumbled away touchdown for the Irish but there is a penalty flag thrown on the far side physical ability of his offensive line. He puts the responsibility for the game, the victory, in their hands. He says, guys, I'm going to run the football. Let's go after one good third down conversion. Against the scoring team. That must have been an undue celebration is all I can think of. <laughs> it was unsportsmanlike con conduct, and they will uh, penalize him on the extra point or on the kickoff. Here, regardless, it is a touchdown and a big one. The Irish lead it again by eight. Ending the outcome here, the extra point. And uh, Holtz wants to get an explanation. And he said, oh, our us. side. Oh, he can't believe it. Our side? <laughs> our side? We would never do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I hope he ends up in college football again because... Uh, he does a great job with college kids. And, you know, he says he has not made up his mind what he's going to do. Right now, he has nothing to do. Does that mean you don't think he could do it in the NFL? No, not at all. I just like his influence on young kids. Pulled the extra point. No good. Oh, my God. They're sitting down at eight. They're leaving the Trojans alive here at 352. A touchdown and a two-point conversion. Is all the Trojans need, but can they do it against this tough Irish defense? We'll be right back. Today's Marriott moment. Let's turn the calendar way back to 1982 here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Trojans down by three. They came storming back to win on this touchdown by tailback Michael Harper. A 17-13 win. And it was USC's last victory over the Fighting Irish. The controversial touchdown stood. John Robinson ending his first tenure. The Southern Cal was a winner over Notre Dame. Since his return, he's been unable to handle the Irish. Now the penalty means that Notre Dame must kick this ball off from their own 20-yard line. And the Trojans are hopeful to get themselves real good field position here with 3.52 remaining. USC down by eight. Soward and Miller have been exchanging positions. They're keeping out of their hands. It's going to be picked up by Soward on the bobble. Got it on the bounce, and he goes right down to make sure he didn't turn it over. Again, another good decision to go ahead and just squib kick that thing down there. He is so dangerous. So reminder about Monday night. Mr. Monday night. Jerry Rice, number 80, San Francisco 49ers. He ended up against Atlanta. The drive for the home field and all those other goodies. And the NFL underway at 9 Eastern. Here, Lou Holtz hoping his defense can hold on. Leading by eight. Brad Ott playing in pain. The black jacket, the bruised ribs in the sternum. Brings them up. Pump fake. High and incomplete. He did, was not comfortable with Bostinelli over there because... Number 14, the defensive back, Covington, was all over him. He had rolled up over there, Brandon, in a double zone move where the corner rolls up and the safety goes deep behind it, and he read that properly and just threw it out of bounds. Otten isn't going to make many mistakes, being a senior as he is in reading coverages, and that simple of a read. In fact, his pre-snap look would have told him what the coverage is. All red, Miller and Bastianelli are the wide receivers. Sermon and Washington are the running backs. Otten on a play fake, he's going to put it up again. 
going to come hard over the middle, complete at the 49-yard line. And that's Bostinelli working in that area, and it's a first down. And now the Trojans will play with half a field and 340 remaining. See what they did now. They have a nice isolation. He has time. It takes time to work down inside those zones, turn and sit. The offensive line did a real good job of getting Ott in a nice cushion to sit there and allow that thing to develop and throw the ball. They weren't doing that earlier in the ball game. 17 yard gain, three and a half minutes. They're coming with a blitz and a toss. They're going to have a running play with Washington. Busts the tackle to the 40 yard line. And that was Delon Washington, the junior from Dallas, with Sanders making the stop for the Irish. But again, it is down there in first down territory for the Trojans. This used to be just the John McKay's USC play, right? The old eye toss, power sweep. Critical times, you could guess he was going to run it, and they ran it well anyway. So they do get the first down. Notre Dame with all three. SC down to one timeout. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They showed run in that play, so they have not passed on every down. Snaps one incomplete already. Was very well defended that time by Gilbo. And there's a young man who's played a fine football game. Has an interception in the end zone. And he defended the two-point pass down here the other side. So he has made two of the biggest plays of the night for the Fighting Irish. And he didn't even start the football game. They started on Johnny Saunders in his place for the first time this year. Second down and ten. Tight end is off to the left. It's all red. Sermon, a good receiver, can slip out of the backfield. And they'll run Washington. Good call for seven yards. This will lead the Trojans in third and three. It, Excellent decision by the coaching staff there. It caught them unawares. They were looking past. But you know, they stunted inside to take away the draw, and they ran the draw anyway. They cross-charged the defensive tackle, which usually worked pretty good against an inside draw, but he found a way to pop through there anyway. Third down and three. Washington staying in the tailback. There's a slot formation to the left for the Trojans. They're going to run the toss sweep. And Washington gets a first down for the Trojans at the 30-yard line. So now they are running right at Notre Dame. And a reminder tomorrow, we've got some excellent golf coming your way. Shell's wonderful world of golf features Tom Kite and Ben Crenshaw. That'll be followed by the back nine of the Skins game. Tiger Woods, John Daly, Tom Watson, Freddie Couples. That's all tomorrow on ABC. 225 remaining now, and the Trojans have driven to the Irish 30-yard line. Must have a touchdown and a successful two-point conversion. They trail it by eight. Bostinelli slotted. Miller out left. Not the throw on first down. Snaps it. He's got Miller. At the 16-yard line, another first down for the Trojans. It's the same combination pattern in the slot that they tried to throw a little earlier, and they rolled up in a double zone. He threw it out of bounds because he couldn't throw it in there. There's a nice slant, three-step drop. He's just going to pant. Pop it right in there. They were not in a double zone over that time. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you should be able to complete that. Covington, the defender, working over there for the Irish. Ott, bruised ribs and all. And he has played well using Chris Miller as his main target here. They have not given up on the block. Here's Washington. Davis scoops through. Washington touchdown. Now the Trojans need the two. thinking about the play it's a long three yards in this situation I know it it's not a gimme 44.5 percent successful in NCAA football last year a lot of attempts tough to make it Bob Davey and the defensive players and the Trojans will use their last time out they're going to talk about it and why not nothing's more important We'll come back with the two-point conversion. It started back in the 20s, this great rivalry. And it seems like it always comes down to these hectic moments. John Robinson, Lou Holtz. One coach has already resigned. The under is up, other is under fire. Now the Trojan, two points away from the top. Brad on eyes the Irish defense. Here's Washington. 
they've got it. Oh, what a great run by D. Law Washington. It looked like he was jammed up. And they brought the house. They brought everybody. Bob Davey wasn't sitting there. They brought the linebackers, everybody up inside. Tough to run. Here's the linebackers in the middle of your screen. They got good penetration. He just kept bouncing away in there. And there he goes. D-Law in Washington gives us a tie game. But there's 150 left in regulation. Guard Bramer, when you can pull and block like this, you can score the touchdowns. Nice kick down, just knocks him right off the line of scrimmage, and in he goes for the score. Tied at 20, but the Irish have been lethal under Holtz at returning kicks. Robert Farmer back as the deep man. 150 to go, and the Irish with all three of their timeouts, just hoping to maneuver down and attempt a field goal in regulation. the five well cut off trying to get out of bounds and there's a face mask face mask penalty is called penalty flags come flying and that is a very costly face mask penalty against the Trojans that was Prentice Hill a sophomore defensive back who reached in and committed the foul Personal foul, 15-yard face mask against the kicking team. First down. Watch the violation right here. There was no question no about question. it. It's a 15-yarder. So Pilas and the Irish. With three timeouts now, 140. Lou won't automatically go to throw in the football. He will mix it up and run. He Double believes in the running Robert game. He'll mix the pass in with it, but he will run it too. Oh, three timeouts in there. Wallace, under center, brings Mosley in motion, and basically that gives him a slot look over on the right. Then he will run with Denson. And just like the coach said, he has not given up on the run. They will take cross the 35-yard line to 36 before they are pushed back. Who calls all the plays? Now he talks to the people in the press box, but he makes the final decisions. That's Bob Chimmel, his assistant coach right next to him. He talks to Dave Roberts in the press box, passes the information on to Lou, and Lou does what he wants to do. So with a timeout being called, we'll take a break and come right back to the Coliseum. From Hill and Jackaroot, I'm Brent Musburger. We are tied with a minute and a half to go. Regulation time, the Irish with the ball. They need to reach the 22-yard line of the Trojans to match Sanson's longest field goal of the year, which was a 39-yarder. Second down and long, Mosley comes in motion. Collis looks in his direction, goes downfield. Near side out of bounds, incomplete. incomplete, and that will make it third down and seven with 125 remaining. Two man pattern, man in motion, they man that run up the sideline and break to it. There's Mosley, number five, trying to get his feet down there, and you can see he was out of bounds all the way. They've got to think first down on this row. They were throwing a long ways downfield there for that one. That's a, not a high percentage completion pass. Now, if they fail to convert on this third down, we will see the punter in this situation. There'll be no question about what the Irish are going to do. That's why the punter is warming up right now. Thomas is going down, and Notre Dame is forced to punt. And now the Trojans have 118 as Big D. Big Mr. Russell gets in on him on the sack. Time coming down to 110. Trojans, remember, are without a timeout. They'll be looking for a return here to give themselves a chance. We have come down inside of a minute in regulation. He can rear up and do this to you when he makes up his mind to get there. He has to hold the football, and then comes Russell. When a quarterback has to hold the ball, the pass, pass rusher should get there. So a lot of pressure on Hunter Smith. And 
the Irish call a timeout. Make sure that they don't have a block punt in this situation and that they defend it. And Lou Holtz, who stresses special teams, wants to talk to his coverage unit with Parker waiting down there. And the clock has run down now to 37 seconds as we approach possible overtime here in this ancient rivalry. It has been a classic. Here's what's unfolded tonight before 90,296 spectators at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Trojans forged the tie here late in the fourth quarter deadlocked at 20 Notre Dame waiting to punt the ball away with a half minute to play and USC without a timeout Parker the return man perfect snap and Ooh, almost eaten up by the Trojans should have blocked it I think the ball went right under his belly if he'd have laid out I think he would have blocked that Brent that was Prentice Hill. Now that is the young man who he was guilty it. of the face mask infraction. And he comes rolling in on the punt and almost blocks this. Watch him. From the left side of your screen, you'll see him flash in there. See, he was beyond the ball. All he had to do was lay flatter. Another look. He just, he didn't get to the kicking point properly. That's the big thing right there. He just didn't get the right angle. He but he there. did force a 28-yard punt. Ball is at the 45-yard line with 28 seconds remaining. Three wide outs and a ton of speed on the outside now for the Trojan shotgun. Otten going to come back to Sermon, and it'll be second down on the incompletion. 24 seconds remain in regulation. Both these teams have been involved in overtime games this season and both have been very unsuccessful. John Robinson has gone to up double overtime against Arizona State and against UCLA. The Irish were beaten in overtime by the Air Force Academy back in South Bend. The pressure mounting now on both sidelines here. The final 24 seconds in regulation. Flag is down. Otten's got a man. Bastianelli out of bounds stopping the clock, but there is a flag. A little formation by the offense. There are only six players on the line. <laughs> the little things. And the little things could mean a lot here in about 18 seconds if we go into overtime. For those of you who are not aware, it is entirely different than the National Football League. There's no sudden death. Teams get equal possession. The offense begins on the opponent's 25 going in. They'll continue on offense until scoring, losing the ball on downs, or turning it over. Remember, you can make a first down now when you start for the 25. And if it's tied after the first overtime, touchdowns, extra points, everything, field goals, and we just keep repeating it until the tie is broken. Now the final 19 seconds of regulation. Wanted soured incomplete coming to coverage and the time is down to 14 seconds. So we could be headed for the first overtime in this ancient rivalry. USC and Notre Dame. We've had some standout players today. Denson of Notre Dame. He's the Irish player of the game. Night for USC. Of course, Chevrolet has had this tradition for years. Now 15 seconds. Third and long. Fires complete. Sauer almost broke free. Shoestring tackle at the 38-yard line. The time clock stops on a first down. Trojans have to hurry. It is first down and eight seconds. And they've got to throw it and complete it out of bounds. They're thinking field goal. Because they don't have the timeout, as you said, Brent. And they don't have a long-range field goal kicker either. Notton's 
checking the sideline as the chains have to get set first. That's why he was checking over there. Now they, yes. they will stop it by throwing it down with yes. six seconds. They use two seconds over there, and John Robinson and his staff will make a decision here. Now, see, Notre Dame is sitting back there in the three-deep zone, and if you push the three-deep as deep as you can get it, you have a chance of taking the slot, man, and working to the sideline underneath that stretch pattern to the sideline, Brent, and that would be close enough for a field goal. The young man who failed at the end of regulation against UCLA. He just wants another chance, but here we come. Six seconds. Notton looks to the middle. Got it at the 22, and the clock runs out. The clock runs out, and the Coliseum shows nothing but zeros, and we'll head to overtime. And Bob Davy did a nice job there, Brent. You know, he went man-to-man -man coverage underneath and stayed with the three deep. So there was tight coverage on the receiver when he got it. So this the final play of regulation. Did a good job. He had protection, enough time to throw the crossing pattern. The right side of your screen, you see there's really tight coverage. We'll come back with overtime between USC and Notre Dame. The time for USC, both were double overtime. And now the all-important coin flip here, according to the coaches, they want to go on defense rather than offense. They want to see what they have to match or beat. Now the coin toss at the center of the field. Captain Paulus, Notre Dame, what is your call? What is your call? What is your call? Heads or tails? Heads he calls. And it is heads. So you can, you will choose defense. You will be on offense first. Which goal do you uh, wish to play at? Which end of the field? You want to play at that end of the field? Okay. okay. USC will get the ball first on the 25 yard line at the tunnel end of the field. Where there are far more Trojan fans, <laughs> we might add, at the closed end of the Coliseum. The Back with the first overtime after this set. word from our ABC stations. Out in overtime, and they do not carry over. Interestingly enough, this morning we asked John Robinson if he liked the overtime rule because he's lost a couple of overtime games. He said yes, he likes it. If he was the czar of football, he might put the ball back at the 40-yard line and take the chip shot field goal out of it and make sure that you have to drive for some first down. Sermons and Washington on the throw on first down. Sermons the receiver and Sermons the running back to the 10-yard line and a first down for Southern Cal in our first overtime. See we are that's the first time they've used that action, Brent, where they ran the counter away and brought the back underneath it. It's really tough to defense that. So you'll see the back coming out to the right side of your screen, Sermon number five. Action went to the left, you pull the defense that way, and he comes out there and does a good job running like a fullback auto run. On their big scoring drive and in the two-point conversion, Southern Cal did not give up on the running play. Delon Washington scoring the touchdown and the two-point conversion. Here, Otten will throw again right over the middle, and he uses his tight end, and that's all red, and he crashes inside the five. And you know what they're doing? Obviously, they have a game plan worked out for this period because they've been in this situation before. Three plays that they haven't used at any time in the ballgame. Coming right up with a nice sequence. It's probably all program. This is what we're going to do. Good coaching by Mike Riley. You run everybody out to the sideline. They bring all red right across the middle inside there. That's the first time he caught the ball today. Second down. Here's the toss. Washington looking for daylight and nothing doing this time. The Irish put him down for a yard loss back at the five yard line and Ronaldo win makes still another stop and a big one here in overtime. Yes an outside linebacker Bill Waggesey who is a backup you know Corey Miners are outstanding player on that side in not in there right now Bill Waggesey playing his spot. So 
for the ball resting just inside the five yard line. Third down here for the Trojans. Miller and Mastinelli come to the short side as the wide receivers. Ott going to throw, fires running back soon. That's touchdown. Let's see. Now remember, it's not sudden death. Notre Dame will get a chance. And the Trojans will come out for their extra point. They've had two blocks this year. Real good job of getting the back out of the backfield. From the left side of your screen, see, they run the double slants inside, pull everybody out there, and get the ball in his hands quickly. Good job in that intense area. Abrams. Put it down. Perfect. Notre Dame. Plus penalty. <laughs> now that is added on to the next offensive series. Oh, that is a huge penalty in overtime. You bet. That moves the ball back. Five yard penalty will be enforced from the 25. So now they got 30 yards to go. From the right side of your screen, he gets the ball down, turns the laces nicely, the ball goes up, and here comes the pressure running right into him right there. He can't run into that guy. And he did a pretty nice job, you know, and he's not an acting major, he's a business major. <laughs> Five yards, critical. In overtime, Notre Dame needs seven. Five yards. They just right now, and you start thinking in terms of field goal and, and a guy that hasn't had the real strong leg for the longer field goal. Of course, that Notre doesn't, Dame doesn't make any difference. Excuse <laughs> me. 25 to the 30. That doesn't make any difference. You're going for seven. Thomas brings him up. Mosley will be slotted to the left. Johnson, the wide receiver on that side. Denson, who's had a huge game. Play fake. Hollis rolls left. Makes the tight end. Short of the first down, but a seven-yard gain to the 24-yard line on first down for the Irish. And both teams bringing their tight end into the attack in this overtime period. There he is, rumbling across the field. Big guy gets it tight, and he's heading for that sideline. Gets knocked down. He hasn't had the ball in his hands many times. Another stop for Knight. Sammy Knight has had a huge night. Second down and four for the Irish. Vincent is jammed up. Bounces out. Going to take a big loss. Taking a big loss on the play. And again, it was good night. Number nine. What a game. But good, good defensive line play right there that pushed it back to Brent. Not only night, he finished it off. But they knocked him back. Good line search by the down four. Russell 96, Lowry 91. Knight slides off. He just prowling right there, waiting to make the play. Comes McCutcheon. Third down and eight. Hollis looking left, has time, rifles high, incomplete. It has come down to one play for eight yards or the end zone. Brian Kelly defending with Lou Holtz. The Irish under the gun, needing this win to climb into that alliance configuration. Coming down to when plays are worth millions and millions of dollars for these young men. This one could be worth well over $8 million. The Irish have been perfect tonight on fourth down. They're three of three, but perhaps none in the career of this man has ever meant so much as this one right now. Three wide receivers to the left. Hollis. Deflected. Southern Cal wins it in overtime. The Trojans have done it. Their first win over Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish since 1982. A huge moment in the history of this great rivalry.
27-20. Robinson and Holtz. Meeting is the two head coaches for the final time. Down we go to Jackaroo, Jack. Well, Lou Holtz and John Robinson conversing right here. Congratulations, John. It's off our kids' back. It's great for our kids. They played good. You know, and they played and they played hard all year. They played hard all year. Really? Earlier this week, you about the Tyson Holyfield fight. I said you were gonna have to be Holyfield. I can't hear it. Well you can tell guys, it's absolutely pandemonium down here. Justifiably so. It's a big win for USC. Now watch defensively number four. He's a linebacker from Texas. His name is Mark Cassano. He comes in on Spencer, the fullback. Hand fights him, gets up in the air with the right hand and knocks it away. And on the other side, Lou Holtz. So dejected. And one more look. At a play that means so much to both sides one they will never forget in this great rivalry as the Trojans storm from behind in the final quarter it was a junior running back number 24 Delon Washington who scored the touchdown and it was Brad Otten who played perhaps the most courageous game that anyone has seen in a Trojan uniform in a long time but it was Delon Washington when they needed it. And then Sermons on the pass for the overtime touchdown. That was the difference. Tomorrow, final nine holes in the Skins game. We hope you've enjoyed another classic moment in USC Notre Dame history. So long, everybody.